Hey, what's happening, everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here. And have I got a brand new video and series for you. What if, what if Deku had a slime quirk? I just wanted to stop by and say hello. And please sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. With that out of the way, let's get this party started. In a local park. A shaken young boy with frizzy green hair stood with his fist up in defense of another youth that laid on the ground. His eyes full of tears, his fight-or-flight impulses blasting on full, standing his ground against a group of delinquents led by a red-eyed boy with spiky blonde hair, whose palms had multiple small explosions erupting from them, as he smiled wickedly towards the frightened boy. You useless Deku! Get out of the way! Quirkless idiot! shouted the atomic blonde as he slowly took steps towards the juniper-haired boy. Charging towards the whimpering youth, the blonde boy primed his explosive palms. The green-haired boy's eyes shut instinctively, and suddenly, his physical body began to dissolve, creating a translucent blue puddle. Shocked, the blonde boy could not stop his momentum and slipped harshly against the slime, which sent him crashing into a dumpster, bending it inwards and sending trash flying. As he opened his eyes, the living puddle scanned the area. His view was foreign, as everything seemed massive to him through this new perspective. The other two boys were stunned at the events that just transpired, as they stared at the now semi-injured blonde and the puddle he slipped on that was formerly Izuku Midoriya. The child who was hiding behind Midoriya yelled as they ran away from the area, escaping their unfortunate situation. What? What the? What's going on? shouted Midoriya in confusion, his voice nearly gurgling out of his now semi-liquid form. Upon hearing the alien-like tone emitted by the viscous puddle, the two boys ran off frightened, leaving Midoriya and the blonde on their own. The now panicking Midoriya yelled out loudly for assistance, but sadly, no one was in the immediate vicinity. Finally, after just a few moments, the frightened youth came to a conclusion. Wait, I... Shouted Midoriya gleefully to the heavens as his quirkless nightmare had finally come to an end. While Midoriya muttered to himself, still in his semi liquid puddle form, the atomic blonde began to compose himself and get out of the trash. He gritted his teeth angrily, but was stunned to see that his companions and his targets were nowhere in sight. Tilting his head in confusion, the youth dusted himself off and was about to leave until he noticed the talking puddle that was beneath Midoriya's discarded clothes. D deku asked the puzzled blonde, which broke the semi-liquid child's endless muttering. A face then formed on the puddle and began staring at the boy. A broad smile-like shape formed below the eyes. Gotcha! Look! I got a quirk! exclaimed the blue slime loudly, which disgusted the blonde, causing him to run off, but not before yelling out in frustration. Gross! You're a frickin' booger! However, the blonde's words did not impact the boy, who was still beaming with happiness. After a few minutes of thinking about his situation, Midoriya began concentrating. His eyes shut tightly while his slime body began to reconstitute itself into a humanoid form. Then, with enough concentration and effort, he was able to return to his solid form. First, he jumped for joy in the middle of the park. Then a cold breeze went by, and with a glance downwards, he would noticed he was naked. Turning as red as a tomato, the boy grabbed his clothing and covered himself up before he ran as fast as he could back home. When the youth arrived at his home, he gleefully told his mother the news of his transformation. The two embraced as her worries washed away and her son's dream of becoming a hero would happen. Quickly, his mother scheduled an appointment with their local quirk specialist to analyze his new abilities further. The following day, the Midoriya family sat across from the mustachioed doctor awaiting the final results from the various tests performed on the eager child. The light chirping of the birds outside of the office drowned out the awkward silence of the room as Inko began to experience anxiety from the quirk doctor's silence. After a few seconds, the doctor sighed, placed his file down on the desk, removed the goggles from his face, and revealed empty eyes. Inko began to sweat profusely as the doctor's body language could be perceived as if he was about to give bad news. Just as the health professional was about to give his tragic information, Midoriya blissfully bounced up and down from his seat in the shape of a mochi ball, a goofy smile present on his slimy face. Well, Miss Midoriya, I don't know how to say this, but 
your son is a slime. His delivery was deadpan, which caused Inko to fall off from her seat as the diagnosis was rather obvious. Then he elaborated on his diagnosis, stating that young Midoriya had a particular type of mutation quirk. With enough concentration, the boy could transform his entire body into pure slime. The remarkable part of his quirk was that his cells would completely change upon transformation, leaving a non-human entity. As a slime, Midoriya could change his body's shape, traverse through small pathways, move through liquids, and stretch to inhuman lengths. But at the moment, the green-haired boy could only change from his human form to a puddle or into the shape of a sphere. Although they discovered that his quirk's development was sparked throughout the tests due to strong emotion, negative emotions caused his physical form to destabilize and go into his present state. The years passed, and Midoriya managed to get a hold of his abilities as a slime, though his former friend turned bully, Katsuki Bakugo, continued to torment him constantly, though most of the time from a distance. Moreover, he had an inherent disgust towards Midoriya, calling him names such as Booger or Snot to attempt to discourage the youth from chasing his heroic aspirations. The bell rang loudly as another semester at Aldera Junior High had finally come to a close, and the joyful Midoriya held the straps of his bag, making his way home. Amongst the eager teens exiting the school was a spiky blonde who held an irate look on his face. Seeing the green-haired boy slide through the crowds of students, Bakugo attempted to push through, only to be knocked around in the commotion. You won't get away from me, shouted the boy, as the shorter boy would disappear into the crowd. Flashes of the incident from years ago played in his head. When Midoriya's quirk had awakened, and the humiliation Bakugo felt when he was covered in trash. Throughout the years, he held a never-ending grudge, and Midoriya's constant smile just caused him to lose his temper. Leaving through the doors of the junior high, the atomic blonde shoved and knocked over many of his fellow students. One boy would quickly recover and get back to his feet, his intention being to confront the bully. But once his eyes met the bloody irises of Bakugo, he quickly shied away. Oi! Booger! shouted the atomic blonde. His fists clenched tightly to the point his knuckles turned to a ghostly white. He ran up to Midoriya to shorten the distance that had formed in the commotion. Then as Midoriya stopped in his tracks, he turned his neck to slime and turned his head around to face Bakugo. The sudden act made the blonde stagger back, his eyes opening widely and the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. Disgust overwhelmed him. Hey Kachan, what's up? asked the boy, who turned his body around to match the orientation of his head. Midoriya's body's fluid motion made Bakugo's stomach turn, nearly making him lose his train of thought. Look, Snot Rocket! You better not think of applying your disgusting ass to you, eh? The irritated blonde threatened, opening his palms and triggering small explosions, just as he was accustomed to doing for intimidation. Midoriya grinned and lifted his hands as if to surrender, lightly laughing, not taking the threat seriously, which irritated Bakugo to no end. After some back and forth, the two boys parted ways, and Midoriya continued on home. Unfortunately, due to ongoing villain attacks in the city, his usual path home was blocked, so he took a long way around and passed through an underpass without a care in the world. Just as he stepped on a manhole cover, it began to shake violently before blasting upwards and embedding itself into the bricks. A wretched stench filled the air as green sludge jumped out of the sewers its coloration a moldy green. Yellow eyes with blood-red pupils stare down at the green-haired boy. It opens its disfigured jaw, revealing large, sharp teeth, its slimy tongue waving from within. Excellent! A skin suit! Just what I needed! growled the sludge monster as it stretched its mucky palms towards the student that seemed like easy prey. Its size grew even larger as it towered over the junior high schooler and cast a shadow over the boy. Just as the monster thought it had the boy in its grasp, it found itself only holding onto discarded clothing, which made it stop dead in its tracks. The green sludge monster held on to the black uniform, unmoving for a few seconds, not knowing what to say. What? What the hell? It asked out loud, until from the corner of its eye, it could see a blue ball of slime with a gentle smile on its face. The villain threw the clothing away and angrily charged towards the ball of slime. And just like before, it missed entirely and Midoriya had appeared just out of the villain's grasp, 
This game of whack-a-mole continued for several minutes until the villain began screaming in pure frustration, until a familiar laugh could be heard entering the fray. A massive muscular silhouette could be seen casting a powerful shadow along the ground, which grabbed the two's attention. Then, with the sunlight shining behind him, the golden-haired Pillar of Justice made his presence known. Have no fear, for I am here, All Might announced, his fists on his sides in a heroic pose, which caused the sludge villain to panic instinctively. Uh, All Might, no, reconsider, pleaded the sludge villain, as All Might wasted no time and launched a powerful punch, displacing the air with gale-forced winds, which blasted the villain apart. The sunken-eyed hero then set his view to the blue slime on the side. The hero began reeling back his fist to attack the boy as well, thinking them to be on the same side. Midoriya's heart sank as panic began to overtake him, and he rapidly forced his body to return back to its human form. Then he waved his arms in the air to catch the attention of the number one hero, which caused the muscled man to stop and jump back. Oh my! No, 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 no! I'm not a villain! I'm not a villain! He spoke at a frantic pace, with his eyes completely shut, and fear still ruled over him. After a second or two of awkward silence, a cool breeze passed through the area, which caused Midoriya's skin to goosebump. Then the familiar realization came to him. He was once again naked. He shouted in embarrassment and turned red from head to toe, and covered himself immediately. The Hero of Peace turned his back and rubbed the back of his head, not knowing what to do with the situation while Midoriya quickly dressed. Luckily, no one else was around. Midoriya bowed multiple times and apologized to his idol for unknowingly flashing him during his heroic moment. After getting a signature from All Might, the blonde hero collected the unconscious body of the slime villain and forced it into two bottles that he slid into his pockets. All Might then exited the area with a powerful jump, soaring over the skies of Japan and leaving the youth jumping for joy as he held his notebook that now contained All Might's signature. While Midoriya made his way home, from behind the boy, a small green ball of slime dragged itself across his back until it melded through the fibers and seeped into his skin, unbeknownst to the aspiring hero. That night, Midoriya slept peacefully as he embraced the signed notebook. During the ten months between the UA entrance exam and the school semester's end, Midoriya focused on using his abilities in ways that he could only imagine. He was able to learn how to shape his body into such a size that he could squeeze through keyholes, through cracks between doors, and even jumping into metal pipes of his home. Although, only occasionally did he burst a pipe or two which flooded his home. Midoriya's pet hamster was very much disturbed by the green-haired boy as he used his pet's cage tubing as a sort of obstacle course, leaving the traumatized rodent shaking in the corner in fear. Although, Midoriya did experience an abnormality. His normal blue tone in his slime form had progressively begun to change into a bright green shade. He paid no mind to it and just chalked it up to his body still evolving as he was a teenager. Unbeknownst to him, there was something far more sinister in the works. The day of the UA entrance exam was upon them, and Midoriya stood tall in front of the steps of the prestigious Hero Academy. His smile was wide, and his eyes shined like diamonds as he took his first steps to those hallowed halls. But sadly, his first step was a slip, and he was currently on his way to the ground. A brown-haired girl attempted to hit the falling boy, but she was just an inch too far away as his face fell straight to the ground, splatting and dissolving into a green puddle. The girl with the shoulder-length hair yelped loudly and immediately ran away from the shock of it all. But the now decomposed teen stayed still. Embarrassment caused his cells to remain unstable, keeping him from reconstituting his form. This is fine. Everything's fine, thought Midoriya, as the loud bell signaled the beginning of the entrance exams. Now alone, he forced his body to reform and forced himself to his feet, running into the UA campus. The green-haired boy pushed the doors open, the loud slamming of the doors getting the attention of hundreds of seated hopeful heroes, all craning their necks towards him with disapproving glares. Through the embarrassment and glares, Midoriya made his way towards the proctor, received his testing forms, and ran to his assigned seat. The pencil he used nearly slipped from his inconsistently formed palms, their compositions shifting between slime and human. Fighting through the nervous energy running through him, Midoriya finished the test, somewhat confident in his success. For the next hour or so, the large grouping of would-be heroes remained sat firmly in the auditorium, 
the excitement caused a minor commotion amongst the teens. The situation was then calmed as a blonde man with a flashy grin walked up to the stage. He was dressed in leather with a type of speaker system attached to his neck. The green-haired boy quickly recognized the man as voice hero President Mike. The reveal of such a famous hero caused the boy to be somewhat starstruck, but his attention would quickly shift to the presentation. All right, kiddos, now that we're done with the old pen and paper, it's time for the practical exam, said President Mike, his voice reverberating through the auditorium, which grabbed the attention of the youths in attendance. Get ready, guys and gals! You guys are gonna be fighting giant robots! He announced as he pointed dramatically to the large screen behind him, revealing the foes they would be facing. A good deal of the teens seemed somewhat discouraged, as not all of the hopefuls possessed flashy quirks suited for this type of exercise. Included in that grouping was the eager Midoriya, who muttered loudly, which brought more unwanted attention towards the teen. President Mike attempted to ignore the green-haired boy, until a tall, bespeckled boy began chastising him intensely. The verbal assault on Midoriya caused his complexion to begin shifting colors from a peachy shade to a slimy blue. Before things could escalate, the leather-bound hero spoke up loudly to shut down the interaction completely and sent them back to their seats. Once instructions were clear, the youths conglomerated in different testing areas, large doors with their sectors marked clear as day. The teens had changed into athletic wear, and began preparing for the challenge ahead of them. Midoriya stretched in anticipation of the exam, until he noticed the brown-haired girl he frightened earlier in the day. Then, just as he approached her, he was intercepted by the tall boy from the auditorium. Don't you dare break that girl's concentration! I will not have you ruining others' chances of getting into this prestigious institution, hoodlum! Said the bespeckled boy sternly, his impressive physique standing strong, intimidating Midoriya enough to step back sheepishly towards the large doors. Suddenly, the steel doors began opening, no signal in sight, which confused the teens. What are y'all waiting for? There ain't any start signs in real life! Go, go, go! Shouted President Mike as he pointed towards the door, which caused startled examinees to rush forward, trampling those who stood in their way. As the dust settled, all that was left was a flattened blue puddle surrounded by a green tracksuit, with the blue slime trickling from the clothes. Well, that's great. So sighed the slimy youth as he remained in his congealed slime form, sliding out of his clothing and forming a humanoid slime form. Then, as he ran into the field, he used the slippery nature of his condition to glide through the replica city. Midoriya's eyes marveled at the intricate structure. It indeed looked like an actual city. The cost of constructing such an area would be something the teen would have to question later on. Sliding through the area, he happily crossed in front of some of the clumsier machines, and left a slime trail behind that caused them to fall to the ground, being crushed under their weight. He snickered as he continued through the area. Using the malleability of his form, Midori would also find more creative ways of taking down the heavier machinery. When causing them to tumble wouldn't be sufficient, he would jump in between gaps in their armor and short-circuit them. To others, it just seemed as if the robots would smoke and collapse only for a cyan slime creature to secrete from them, grossing many teens out in the process. Racking up point after point, the translucent hero hopeful felt his odds for getting into the hero academia to grow in his favor. Then, just as the robots began to seem scarce, a massive mechanical titan outstretched its head from in between the buildings. The eyes of the slime bulged out, comically reacting with shock to the mechanical titan's sudden appearance. The crowd of students began running away from the approaching monstrosity, and Midoriya was about to join them until cries of help would reach him from a distance. Then, focusing his vision, the slimy youth recognized the brunette as the girl from before. Gulping audibly, the slime boy instinctively began dashing forward, no plan in mind. Just as the giant robot began approaching the girl, its massive steel boot about to come down on her, Midoriya jumped into action. A blue blur cast a shadow across the girl's face that quickly shot up towards the machine's head. His humanoid form shifted to that of a sphere and slid through the metal body at intense speeds. Suddenly, the tint in the slime began to go from blue to green as he jumped above the robot's head, his body suddenly spreading like a green blanket completely wrapping the machine's head. Time for you to die! shouted an eerie voice with a cold cackle following close behind as the pressure around the steel suddenly increased and crushed the machinery. The sudden action caused the robot to tumble backwards, 
but its circuits began firing and igniting into a flashy explosion during the fall. The slime boy was shot from the machine like a rubber band, making a direct impact on the side of a wall, which caused a loud splat and spread his body from the collision. After some time on the wall, the slime reconstituted and slid from the wall onto the ground. The mound of slime then began reforming to its normal state, the body of Izuku Midoriya. The loud alarms that signaled the end of the exams impacted the ears of many students participating. Most of the applicants stood dumbfounded by the sudden actions of the boy. Some filled with awe, others with disgust from the slimy nature of the teen's quirk. Then seemingly, all at once, they quickly averted their eyes, for when his body reformed, he was naked. UA paramedics and nursing staff began entering the field and treating the injured youths. Though when they reached Midoriya, they found he didn't have a single scratch on him. On the other hand, he seemed at peace, snoring loudly on the ground. You don't see that every day, said the elderly recovery girl, as she instructed her team to place the young Midoriya on a gurney and take him to the infirmary for monitoring. His stay in the medical area was brief, an hour at most. Soon after waking up, his clothes were returned to him, and he made his way back home. The weeks passed, and Midoriya paced around anxiously inside his room, his thoughts still trying to analyze the exams. He was sure that he had performed optimally to get into his dream school. But why hadn't his acceptance letter arrived? Suddenly, the door to his room flew open. His mother, out of breath, held a letter in her palm as she gestured towards her son. I Izuku, I it's, le it's a letter from UA! She yelled out, which caused Midoriya's hair to stand on end, as he snatched the letter and opened it quickly, which caused a strange disc to fall from it. They fumbled the disc until it reached his desk, and activated a hologram, which displayed the Hero of Peace, All Might in all his splendor. Both of the Midoriya's eyes widened at the sight, holding each other's hands for support, as the yellow-suited muscle man began to speak. Booyah! I am here as a projector now! Greetings, young Midoriya, and forgive me for startling you! The blonde-haired pro hero began posing and flexing as a hand in the background waved at him to continue. All right, yes. Wait, I have to record how many of these things? Coughing and recomposing himself, the hero flashed his signature grin as he placed his hands on his sides in a power pose. Young man, you waste the written exam. And as for the practical exam, you manage a total of 53 villain points. The man's voice echoed through the two Midoriya's ears as their eyes began to fill with tears. But wait, there's more. We had a secondary scoring system. Since you risked your life to protect a young girl in danger and managed to save her, you have been awarded an additional 60 rescue points, giving you a total of 113 points. Young Midoriya began calculating the score in his head. The dam of tears had broken, which caused both Midoriyas to cry intensely. Not only have you achieved a score to join our ranks, but you achieved the overall top score! Congratulations, young Midoriya! The suited yellow man outstretched his hands in a welcoming fashion as he continued. And welcome to the Hero Academia! The two Midorias yelled in glee as they embraced each other, and their intense happiness overwhelmed them completely. It was a new day in Japan. The bright ball of gas and flame that gave its incandescent brightness illuminated the sky. Shades of black turned to blue, revealing white marshmallow-like clouds that decorated the heavens. A perfect day for a certain youth to start his heroic journey. Standing in front of a large mirror, the juniper-haired boy smiled brightly as he adjusted his tie, the knot in a single large bundle around his neck, the ends of it hanging loosely to his abdomen. Sunlight slowly shone into the room, lighting up his image on the reflective surface. The excitable youth had been awake for hours at this point, his exhilaration alone fueling his small frame. The All Might alarm clock next to his bedside began to move and shake, shouting the hero's catchphrase in a repetitive cycle, pushing the dismissal lever on the disruptive gadget and making his way downstairs, only for Midoriya to be met by his mother, who had already prepared a small breakfast for the two. Soon after, the emerald-eyed boy began marching his way towards his academia, which he longed to be a part of for many years. His smile stretched from ear to ear, content to know he proved all of his adversaries wrong. He too could be a hero. Not even a certain blonde could deny it anymore. 
Within the classroom of Class 1A sat a familiar ash blonde, his legs lazily thrown over his seat, arms behind his head, his deathly glare directed out through the window. Not a single word was exchanged between the teen and his fellow students, his aura of destructive energy acting as a repellent to any interaction. This has got to be some kind of joke, thought the sloppily dressed blonde, his teeth grinding at the image of the green at smiling causing him to be more and more angry. To think that his childhood victim had not only got into the school of their dreams, but scored higher than him? It was an absurd notion, but no matter how unbelievable it was, it was the reality of the situation. Heaving a heavy sigh, Bakugo threw his head back and attempted to cool down his temper, until a familiar broken voice caught his ear. The doors of the room slid open, revealing the green-haired boy speaking with a tall, bespeckled youth with navy blue hair. Bakugo's head jerked violently in the direction of the two boys, his anger beginning to overflow instantaneously. The memory of his humiliation when he was nothing but a toddler emerged to the forefront of his consciousness, the feelings of frustration and anger bringing him to his feet. Just as the chaotic blonde began approaching the wide-eyed teen, the rustling of fabrics distracted the entirety of the classroom. A large yellow object rolled its way into the room, forcing its way to a vertical stance. The zipper fell open, revealing a wild-haired man with deep bags under his tired eyes. The appearance of the black-haired man silenced the commotion that had been roaring in the background. Sliding out of the yellow sleeping bag, the strange adult cleared his throat and then sighed before speaking. Great. It took you eight seconds to get quiet. Time's limited. You kids are not rational, lectured the man in an exhausted voice, causing many of the high school freshmen to feel rather disheartened. Quickly, the standing teens ran to their seats in respect of the authority figure. My name is Shota Aizawa, and I've been put in charge of you lot. The name of the man was recognized by Midoriya instantly, his eyes sparkling in admiration of the stealth hero, Eraserhead. He remained quiet, but his overly eager gaze made even the stone-faced man in front of the class uncomfortable. Put these on and meet me at the courtyard. From the sleeping bag, Aizawa pulled a bunch of gym uniforms out for the students to wear. And you, stop staring at me, Aizawa said towards Midoriya, who changed his color to a slight blue, with his body jiggling like gelatin in fear. The class quickly changed into their given uniforms and promptly made their way outside to their instructed location. The conglomerate of students assembled in a disorderly fashion, teens separating into groups getting to know their new classmates. Though apart from the group stood Bakugo, hands firmly in his pockets, a permanent look of annoyance resting on his face. Even though he looked away, Midoriya remained within his peripheral vision, causing him visible discomfort. All right, brats, listen up. Aizawa said, his voice resonating with annoyance and disinterest. Their teacher's words prompted them to go quiet, though at the tail end of the group, Midoriya continued his chat with a purple-toned boy, unaware of the presence of their teacher. A swift elbow jabbed the greenette in the ribs, which caused him to yelp from the unexpected impact. Just then, he turned around to see the black-garbed man glaring intensely in his direction, causing the slimy youth and the pint-sized teen to quake in their place and grow silent. As I was saying, we are going to have a physical assessment test. Essentially, the same thing you've done for years in school. The announcement of a physical test caused many of the students to sigh in protest. The man's intense glare then silenced the group. Difference is, you'll be using your quirks. Manic laughter began coming from the grouping of students, causing the members of 1A to look in the direction of the disruptive sound. Bakugo had entered a manic laugh, his teeth bared in a massive smile that caused shivers to run up and down the spines of his classmates. That's more like it! shouted the ashen youth, swiftly removing his hands from his pockets to start blasting explosive from his palms in a show of dominance. Though as quickly as the eruptions of sweat began, they suddenly stopped. Aizawa's hair stood on end with his eyes glowing ruby red with a menacing scowl to complement it. The rowdy youth's cocky grin remained, even though his quirk had been nullified, though questions began arising from the group. One hand rose first, coming from a young girl with round cheeks and brown shoulder-length hair. Excuse me, Mr. Aizawa, won't we miss orientation? Uaraka asked, having had some prior knowledge of how the start of the school year should usually go, at least according to the school itinerary. Others joined in protest of missing additional activities that would involve getting more knowledge of their new educational facility. I have free reign to teach this class as I see fit, 
If you have a problem with that, you're free to leave, replied the Eraser Hero, his tone strict and nonchalant at the same time. The protesting teens began to simmer down as they continued to listen to their teacher. There's not a lot of time, and we don't need to focus on useless things, said the black-garbed man, grabbing a softball from a pile and throwing it towards the distracted Midoriya. The ball hit him in the forehead, which immediately became concave due to the surface turning to slime. The unexpected impact gave Midori a little time to react, sending him to the ground. The softball rolled off the indentation on his skull, which then bounced back and solidified. Others in the group then began to hold in their laughter, though the explosive blonde burst out in pure delight. Seems you're useless, sighed Aizawa, as he picked up another ball and threw it towards the cackling blonde, who caught it instinctively. What's the furthest you've ever thrown a ball during a physical assessment? questioned the tired man, his indifference emanating from his words. Heck, I don't know, 30 meters or so, replied Bakugo as he stepped forward towards his teacher. Great, now try using your quirk, said the educator as he gestured towards a circle in the dirt. The blonde followed and prepared himself to launch the softball. Now you can do whatever you want, just stay inside the circle, instructed Aizawa as he stood back and held a small device in his palm. Bakugo gave a wicked smile as he reeled back and launched the softball at full strength. Right at the end of the throw, a massive explosion rocketed the ball into the sky, a shockwave lifting dirt and pushing some of the students back. After a few seconds, the gadget in Aizawa's hand flashed with a final score from the throw, signaling the distance traveled. 702.5 meters. Great. Upon hearing his score, Bakugo began cackling and teasing his classmates to dare attempt to surpass him, shooting deadly glares towards his childhood friend. The students began getting excited, brainstorming on how to use their quirks to perform optimally. Although, more than a few students did mention that this would be a fun experience, which caught the ire of Aizawa. Fun, huh? How about we up the stakes? The person who finishes last overall, he paused as the students' faces began to change in fear of what was to come, will be expelled. The teens' eyes widened and fear began to overwhelm them completely. Cries of protest were silenced by simple hand gestures from Aizawa. Student after student went and took their turn at bat, throwing the ball utilizing their special abilities. A few students managed impressive scores. The creation quirk user, Momo Yoyorozu, managed to surpass Bakugo by creating a cannon, and after her, the Gravity Quirk user managed an impossible score of infinity thanks to her unique gravity powers. In the end, the last one called was Midoriya, who was still sitting on the floor, muttering to himself while the others took their turns. Hey, useless. You're up, Aizawa called, waving the boy over, and throwing a ball in his direction once more, this time being successfully caught. The green-haired boy stood staring at the ball in his palms staring at it for around a minute, which began irritating his instructor. Throw the ball or you fail, spat the man, anger lingering in his voice, which caused the youth to jiggle slightly, being somewhat destabilized. How do I- He paused before suddenly speaking up. Inspiration finally hit him. Oh, I got it now, shouted Midoriya. His smile beamed brightly. The palm that gripped the softball suddenly turned to slime, along with his forearm. Using his free hand, he began pulling back on the slime, forming a makeshift slingshot. Shaking from the tension built in his arm, he let out a loud yell as the ball shot like a bullet, blowing back air and knocking the green-haired boy over. The ball flew straight into the air, breaking through low-flying clouds, and disappearing from view, the entire class grew quiet, especially Bakugo, whose eyes twitched in frustration as the gadget in Aizawa's hand began to sound off. Uh, how'd I do? asked Midoriya, who was still on the ground. His arm slowly shrank back to its normal length. 1,324.6 meters. The result left many students baffled. Their jaws hung open. Bakugo stared intently, his eyes and fingers twitching with a mix of anger and shock. You're the man, Midoriya, shouted a purple boy as he ran up to his newly formed friend, which caused the others to cheer along after the initial surprise had passed. The rest of the assessments were rather uneventful, Midoriya faring decently in most activities, with the only exception being the grip test. Walking up to the machine, he was gestured forward by his classmates, while his teacher looked on, fully expecting the boy to fail. Gulping audibly, he placed his palms on the grips and quickly turned his palms to slime, 
squeezing as tight as his body would allow. The score remained at zero the entire time he squeezed. Looking back at a smirking Aizawa, he smiled awkwardly. No, this, this won't work, said the teen in defeat, until the machine began to spark and smoke, the score suddenly beginning to escalate randomly. A small explosion blasted a hole in the side of the machine with a total score marked 9,999 kilograms. Guessing that doesn't count, huh? Asked the boy as he released the grip and began rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. Zero points, said Aizawa with a deadpan delivery, which caused Midoriya's head to drop in disappointment. At the end of the school day, the scores had been tallied and Midoriya managed to be in the top 10 of his class. This gave him great pride as he began smiling towards his short friend, who was crying heavily as he had ended up dead last. Hey, it's okay, Mineta. I'm sure everything will be all right. Midoriya reassured the short-statured boy, patting him on the back. Though this did little to calm the erratic teen, Aizawa called the students together once more for what they believed was a public expulsion. The expressions on their faces were a mix of relief and sadness to the current situation. I'm sorry to tell you that for the next three years, Yue will run you through the ringer. That's plus ultra. Use your strength to overcome it all, so bring it. Class dismissed, announced the black-haired man as he prepared to walk away, giving his students a thumbs up. Bubba, wasn't I supposed to be expelled? Shouted the boy with purple spheres in his head, his eyes still bursting with tears. Oh, that? That was a logical ruse to get you all to perform your best. Aizawa said with a rather strange smile on his face, his veiny, tired eyes opening wide in the process. Collectively, the entirety of Class 1A breathed a sigh of relief while Mineta cried louder as he jumped into Midoriya's arms, now crying for joy. The loud bell of Yue signaled the end of the school day, the many first years walking in small groups as they began to disperse, leaving on the bus or with their families that waited at the gates. Midoriya said his goodbyes to his new friend Mineta and continued his way onto the streets to make his way home. Snot Rocket! The familiar voice of Bakugo reached the slightly exhausted Midoriya, who stopped dead in his tracks. You! You got lucky today! I'm gonna crush you the first chance I get! Growled Bakugo, as he passed by Midoriya and shoulder-checked him, which caused the green-haired boy to drop his notebook. Okay, see you tomorrow, Kachan! Yelled out the green-haired boy in a friendly tone while picking up his notebook, which caused the angry blonde to scream in frustration from a distance. The following morning, Class 1A was going through their usual morning chatter until they were told their next course was Hero Studies. Their first true class concentrated on their ambition, and the students talked amongst themselves, anxious of what would come next. Suddenly, the sliding door shot open, and a tall, instantly recognizable hero dashed inwards in a dynamic pose. Walking through the door like a hero, yelled All Might loudly, with a massive smile on his face that instantly lifted the spirits of any who were in its vicinity. The students cheered in excitement, especially Midoriya, who began to shift colors as his own smile reflected the hero's presence. Yes, it is I, All Might, and I will be your hero studies instructor. The man began to flex and pose, showing off his impressive physique. He was dressed in a red costume with a flowing blue cape, his vintage Silver Age costume. Today, we will be performing battle trials. But first, if you're going to be heroes, you gotta dress like heroes, shouted the man, as he gestured towards personalized briefcases with the names of each student. Inside will be the costumes you all commissioned when applying to UA. Now change up, and let's all meet up at Ground Beta. All Might concluded with a hearty laugh as he exited the room. The students cheered and quickly changed into their personally designed hero costumes, some with intricate detail, others with more questionable taste. The one thing could be said, this class looked a whole lot more like heroes. Midoriya nervously left the changing rooms in a short-sleeved bodysuit with a short popped-up collar, wearing matching tights that reached beneath sleek, simple boots, the colors light gray and green. Midoriya ran his fingers through his second skin that felt cool to the touch. A small trail of slime lingered on his fingertips. Within the briefcase, he found a note with specifications regarding his costume. The suit itself was made using fibers from Midoriya's hair that would in turn transform along with him, meaning his days of accidental nudity had finally come to an end. He jumped for joy before running behind his classmates that had already left for ground beta. Arriving after everyone had already been there, Midoriya stopped only to see a large screen with teams having been already assigned. Apologizing for his tardiness, the green-haired boy quickly ran forward to inspect the list, attempting to find his name. After a few minutes, 
he managed to locate himself on the screen. He had been assigned to team up with his new friend, Mineta, though their opponents caused his heart to sink. It was Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Ida. Slowly cranking his head backwards, Midoriya could see his tormentor with a wide, evil grin, carefully causing explosives to go off in his palm. I told you, I'd get you, growled the blonde, knowing his time for revenge had finally come, and he would savor this moment. Now that all the teams had been made and the matches had been scheduled, All Might began giving instructions on how the exercise would play out. There would be a villain team and a hero team. If the heroes managed to apprehend the villains and find the fake bomb, they would be victorious. But if the timer for the explosive were to reach its end, or if they defeat the heroes, the villains would win instead. Midoriya and Mineta locked eyes before gulping audibly, sighing as they knew what was to come would surely be hell. Amongst the students, Team A composed of Izuku Midoriya and Minoru Mineta, who began to sweat nervously as their gazes met their opposing team. The loud crackling of Bakugo's knuckles and devilish grins sent waves of worry to the teens. This was interrupted by All Might, who announced that the first teams to participate were teams A and D. The villain team composed of Bakugo and Ida, who proceeded into the building to stage their setup, as the grape and slime duo stood by. Mineta's internal panic began to surface as Midoriya began to shape his worry into strategy, his muttering growing louder to the annoyance of the waiting youths. But soon he was brought back to reality when his attention was focused on All Might. Time to go, heroes! To your starting positions! exclaimed the golden hero of peace, who stood in a heroic pose, attempting to make light of the situation, yet also keep control of his class. The two hero hopefuls promptly began making their way towards their starting positions. The grape hero's legs shook in fear. As Midoriya seemed to mutter the entire time, his skin and costume shifted colors from cyan to green and back again. Upon reaching the building that was to be the location of their exercise, Mineta began yanking on the juniper-haired teen's tights to grab his attention. Midoriya, what are we supposed to do? Please, tell me you came up with a plan, said the short-statured boy, waving his arms frantically. Midoriya hit his palm after receiving inspiration. He grinned from ear to ear as his skin finally defaulted to its natural color. He squat down to meet the gaze of his classmate. Midoriya's eyes were wide open, matching his unnerving happy smile. This caused Mineta to take a step back, shivering from the sight. After a few seconds of conversing, the two bumped fists and exchanged determined smiles as All Might signed off for the beginning of the battle trial. The two took in a large breath of air and made their way into the massive structure. Going through the halls of the building, the silence of it all caused the nerves to creep up once more. Just follow the plan, Mineta. It'll be fine. Bakugo is just a big, angry kitty cat said the slime quirk user, with a warm smile that did little to encourage his teammate. The silence was broken as a familiar scream began echoing through the corridors. The two quickly jumped and flattened their bodies against the wall, Midoriya doing this literally as his body shifted to slime immediately. A blast then ruptured through the hallway, missing the two entirely. Scarlet eyes shone brightly through the dispersing dust, with a cackle of despicable joy reverberating throughout. Hey, booger! Show yourself! Time to wipe you out! Shouted Bakugo as his face was now clearly visible, his gloved arms ready for another explosion. A few short seconds passed, and no response was given by the hero team, which angered the atomic blonde. He pointed his explosive palms forward and prepared to blast down the hall repeatedly, Though before he could, a shadow formed above him. Suddenly, a cloak-like green slime began falling over him. Quickly shifting his stance, Bakugo blasted upwards towards the slime, causing it to splatter across the walls, which shocked the spectators. Thinking he had gotten the better of the slime user, he began to laugh victoriously, though just as he had dropped his guard, the slime quickly reconstituted around the boy's legs. No! Get off, you disgusting freak! 
Bakugo shouted frantically as he felt the cold sliminess seeping in through his costume and touching his skin. He aimed his palms downward, prepared to strike back, though at that very moment, a barrage of purple spheres came into view. Gritting his teeth in frustration, the blonde let out a loud yell before causing the sweat in his palms to ignite, blasting Midoriya away and forcing the sticky balls away from their intended target. The explosions caused dust to lift once more, blinding the combatants. Rubble from wrecked walls now distributed around the hall, creating a perfect hiding place for the purple-clad boy. Oh god, oh god, he's a demon! Thought Mineta, whose hands gripped his protective rubble shield. Behind the nearly in tears Mineta, a light poke caused him to yelp in fear. Once he turned to investigate the touch, he saw small tiny cyan spheres of slime resembling the sticky ones thrown before. The shape of a thumbs up then emerged from the slimy substance, which made the boy smile, his teary eyes finally finding hope in the situation. Great jelly wrath! shouted Mineta in a broken voice as a barrage of spheres began shooting into the dust. You idiot! If it didn't work before, what makes you think I'll fall for it all again? Bakugo screamed as he began running forward, explosions deflecting the spheres that approached him. The tactic seemed to be failing until suddenly, five spheres began approaching him at intense speeds. Reacting to the assault, the team followed up with another explosion, but this time, the spheres split into smaller ones. Bakugo's eyes opened wide as he was hit repeatedly by dozens of small slime spheres that were followed by purple sticky balls. The impact pushed the blonde back as his vision was stopped by the spheres that now held onto his flesh. More and more purple balls began hitting Bakugo, causing him to stick in the center of the hall, entirely blinded. Shouting, the red-eyed teen began ripping the slime off his body, his palms blasting with powerful charges. Damn it all! Who gives a damn about a stupid exercise? I'll kill you all! Roared the teen as he grabbed hold of his grenade gauntlet and blindly aimed down the hallway. The deadly threat caused the entirety of Class 1A to stand, shouting towards their instructor to stop the exams, as Bakugo had gone too far. Young Bakugo, stop! That's enough! Shouted the symbol of peace through the intercom system. His pleas fell on deaf ears. The enraged teen quickly grabbed and pulled on the pin attached to his grenade-like gauntlet, which caused the weapon to glow brightly. Midoriya saw what was about to happen, his slimy form moving on its own. As quick as he could, the scattered cyan slime quickly gathered and wrapped around the igniting arm of Bakugo. The color of the translucent slime shifted to green as it began to expand from the blast, with light shining through the translucent body. A massive explosion followed, though instead of blasting forward, it blasted backwards, towards the blinded boy's arm. The momentum from the blast sent Bakugo flying and slamming into the wall, with his body embedding itself in the stone. In return, Midoriya had been blasted back as well, shooting across the hall and splattering flat against a wall. Mineta's eyes had shut during the entire altercation, though due to the proximity of the blast, a loud ringing would deafen the boy momentarily. The dust settled, and the purple-toned boy slowly opened his eyes, only to see horror. Across from him was Bakugo, whose arm was charred black and bent in an unnatural position, with the gauntlet falling apart, nearly disintegrating. But before he could run to see if their opponent was alright, Mineta looked back to see Midoriya slowly reshaping his slimy body into a human one. Midoriya! shouted the short-statured youth, as he ran to his teammate to check on his condition. Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, Safari. In short, if it's a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these major sites is click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. It takes two clicks to install Honey. 
Now, anytime you check out, Honey will scan the entire internet and find coupon codes for you. If there's a coupon code, they will find it. And if there's not a coupon code, you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible and there literally is not one available on the internet. If you install Honey right now, you can save like $50 to $100 on your shopping doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It just takes two clicks. 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews. Unless you hate money, you should install Honey. Midoriya had managed to regain his human form and was resting against the wall. Scuffs covered his body while his breath was shaky and uneven. Though considering how he jumped in front of a deadly blast, it was a miracle he was in such good shape. Hey, buddy. I told you he was just a, a kitty cat. Sighed Midoriya as he attempted to catch his breath. A small smile still resting on his face. How in the world are you okay? You jumped in front of a freaking explosion! Mineta said, lightly punching the recovering slime hero, which caused him to laugh from the interaction. Back in the spectator's area, All Might stood watching the cameras, dumbfounded by the altercation between the teens. Most of the students remained quiet, not even asking about the blonde's condition, with the exception of Kirishima, who prompted the adult to get the blonde medical attention. All Might, you need to get Bakugo out of there! Look at him! He's all jacked up! Shouted the redhead as he ran out to the golden-haired Paragon of Peace. Uh, 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 y yes y yes quite right, young Kirishima! All Might replied as he shook the shock of the moment and quickly informed the medical department to run to action. Through the intercom system, All Might told his students that the exercise would continue as scheduled until time ran out. The two boys on the hero team looked at each other and sighed, knowing that even if they were exhausted, they would have to proceed. Mineta helped Midoriya to his feet as the two proceeded through the stairs and passed by an unconscious and heavily injured Bakugo, who was taken away by medical staff. He's gonna be okay, right, Midoriya? Asked the boy in purple, looking up at his friend. He's tougher than he looks. I'm sure he'll be okay. Midoriya reassured him as the two finally entered the top floor, which only housed the speedster Ida who guarded their target. The color of Midoriya's eyes flashed from their natural emerald green to a strange blood red. His heart pounded heavily and adrenaline began to flood through his entire body. M Midoriya? asked Mineta in a low whisper, feeling an eerie aura beginning to pulse from his comrade. Within Midoriya's mind, he could see violent actions taking place, how he could strike down his opponent, how he could end his life. His breath shook violently from the mental stress that attacked the boy. Then, hearing his friend's whispers quickly shocked him back to attention. His eyes returned to their natural green shade. Oh, uh, sorry, my bad. Let's, let's get him. Don't forget the plan. As he took a few steps forward, Midoriya looked back at Mineta with a kind smile. He then morphed his body into a slime and began to travel the room, up the walls and across the ceiling. Mineta looked on, an eerie feeling still lingered about, emanating from the slime hero. Upon reaching the area above the payload, the cyan slime began to slowly and silently stretch out to covertly reach the explosive. But as he was only a few inches away from his target, it was pulled away at incredible speeds. Not so fast, hero! Shouted Ida in a theatrical and stereotypical villain voice. As he held the payload in his arms, the navy hair team began to laugh, continuing his villainous act. You might have stopped my foolish compatriot, but you aren't near fast enough to catch me before time runs out, continued the boy, dressed in knightly gear. Suddenly, Midoriya struck like a serpent towards Ida, but the speedster's quirk caused him to miss. As he crashed into the ground, the green net pooled into the floor 
and promptly bounced back, striking in the same manner, failing time and time again. Try as much as you'd like, you heroic fool! You shall not stop me! said Ida, whose voice was filled with boastfulness, blending into his character. Although, before he could complete his sentence, he noticed his legs couldn't move. Upon being forced to a halt, he looked downwards and noticed that he had stepped on several purple balls. Gotcha! confirmed Mineta in a victorious pose, as he gave Midori a thumbs up, who immediately wrapped around Ida and captured the payload. And it's over! Hero Team wins! All Might announced through the speaker systems, which caused some of the students to cheer, while others carefully analyzed the surprising result. Midoriya and Mineta high-fived after they were announced the winners. The three teens exited the building and returned to the control room with the rest of their class. Their performances were praised by all, though it was time for their instructor to provide his commentary. Congratulations, hero team! You successfully apprehended the villains and captured the payload! Great work! Complimented All Might with a bright smile on his face, though his expression seemed somewhat disturbed, thinking of the unconscious body of Bakugo that was taken away a short while ago to the infirmary. Young Ida, you performed admirably. You behaved villainously, as could be. Though today's failure can be attributed to a lack of teamwork. The symbol of peace named Midoriya and Mineta the MVPs of the exercise, due to their flawless teamwork throughout. The rest of the teams proceeded without much commotion and with little injuries. Although, one short fight caught Midoriya's attention. In a matter of seconds, the hero team of Shoto Todoroki and Mizo Shoji managed to secure victory as the building was completely encased in a wave of ice which came from the two-toned youth. Maybe we should steer clear of that one, mumbled Midoriya with a playful shove towards his friend, who, instead of paying attention to the screen, was staring lasciviously towards his female classmates. You know, most of those girls could kill you pretty easily, teased the freckled youth, which caused Mineta to start sweating bullets and hide behind Midoriya. This brought the green-haired boy to tears of laughter, as the purple-shaded teen argued the humor of the situation. Hours later, Bakugo laid in what seemed to be an emergency room. His hero costume had been discarded, and all he wore was a hospital gown. His right arm was still badly burned, the majority of which had been taken care of by the caretaker of the infirmary. In the mind of the unconscious teen, Bakugo's imagination ran wild. The image of a massive sludge monster with deadly scarlet eyes and sharp teeth loomed over him. The boy's skin crawled with fear and disgust as the massive sludge creature overtook him, consuming him whole. Back off! yelled Bakugo as he sat up covered in sweat. An intense pain began pulsing from his right arm, which he quickly grabbed a hold of. As he winced in pain, he noticed he could barely move his fingers, let alone his entire arm. Thinking back, everything went dark as soon as he decided to use his grenade gauntlet back at the battle trial. God damn it! That frickin' booger! Screamed Bakugo loudly, until he could hear a shushing sound coming from the other side. When looking towards the origin of the silencing sound, he saw a short old woman walking with a cane. She approached the blonde, which took him back slightly, until he finally recognized her from the entrance exams, as Recovery Girl, the main person who took care of injured teens during that exam. Cool it, hothead. You've gotten yourself into quite the pickle. The spiky-haired boy grit his teeth in frustration and looked away, avoiding eye contact with the woman. His vision then settled towards his scarred and discolored flesh. He remembered how he felt a cold substance wrap around his arm when he launched his attack. Thanks to my quirk, we were able to put your arm back together, though your bones and muscles were severely damaged. You could be looking at permanent nerve damage if you aren't careful. 
said Recovery Girl, as she walked towards the blonde's chart and looked it over. She began to read in a low voice before looking up at the distracted teen. Your actions today were reckless. If you want to be a hero, you need to be careful, commented the older woman as she exited the room. You're free to go. Bakugo dressed himself and left the room, his arm placed in a sling. The situation made the boastful boy rethink his actions. The one whom he tormented endlessly beat him. Someone with such a seemingly useless quirk injured him. The extras had taken the spotlight, and there was nothing the teen could have done. As he walked back home, the copper lights of the fading sun covered the area. He kept his head down as he proceeded through the sidewalk, passing others without a word. Eyes dull, frustration setting in. For the first time, Bakugo felt defeated. He arrived home at nighttime and was greeted by his mother, who immediately began chastising him for his behavior. Yue had called earlier and informed his parents about his behavior. The loud voice of his mother took up the space of the house. The berating was finally dulled once the boy entered his room and slammed the door shut. As he threw himself on his bed, Bakugo looked over at a poster of All Might that was on his wall. I am here. A phrase proudly written in bold letters on the large image. After some time, Bakugo sat up and grit his teeth before belting at the top of his lungs. You'll see, Booger! I'll be the next number one hero, and there's nothing you can do to stop me! After a star-making performance in the battle trials, Izuku Midoriya made his way to Yue, re-energized to continue his heroic education. However, upon approaching the school's gates, he was met by a massive crowd of media representatives, reporters, and the like, pestering all students and faculty that attempted to make their way inside. Gulping audibly, the freckled youth walked into the fray, instantaneously being assaulted by queries from the media. His skin color shifted like a disco ball as he pushed his way through, though the lack of movement from the crowd caused him to leave slimy residue against the clothing of the media. This alone caused them to move out of the way, as their fancy clothes were soiled from the interaction. As he entered the campus, Midoriya could hear a female reporter who was especially insistent on getting answers from the teen slip and fall, which caused him to chuckle as he left the area. The loud bell signaled the start of the school day. At this time, Class 1A was conversing amongst themselves, awaiting their instructor. Although, of all the superhero hopefuls in the class, one was missing. Katsuki Bakugo. The missing teen had been noticed by Midoriya, who hoped that the previous day's injuries hadn't been grave enough to cause the boy to miss the day. These thoughts were caught off guard as a rather visibly annoyed Aizawa entered the room. Having had his hands full in the morning, dealing with the press that had attempted to force themselves onto the campus, it seemed to have derailed his morning. The man slipped his hands into his pockets and directed himself towards his students with a heavy sigh. All right, let's cut to the chase. You're gonna have to pick a class representative. I don't care who you pick, just do it. As he made his way to his desk and leaned back, letting his eyes close, giving him a moment's rest. Shortly after the announcement, the room doors opened for the missing Bakugo to make his presence known. Cutting through the front of the class, he shot daggers towards his fellow heroes in training, his right arm nestled in a sling. Ida then stood, berating the blonde for his tardiness. However, this fell on deaf ears as the atomic blonde threw himself onto his seat and lazily kicked his feet up as he usually did, showing it was business as usual for him. After Bakugo's disruptive appearance passed, the members of 1A had mutually agreed to a democratic voting system to choose their representative. After allotting the time required for the group's organization, the votes were tallied and the results had been revealed. It seems we have a tie between... Momo Yayorozu and Tenya Ida, said Aizawa, his head hidden within his yellow sleeping bag, now laying on the floor away from sight. The rest of the day has gone as it would be expected, not much excitement, until lunchtime came about. The various students of Class 1A joined their peers in the lunchroom as they conversed amongst themselves. Even though most of them got along well, 
they were separated into small cliques, getting to know their fellow teens. Hey, Midoriya, do you think Bakugo is still angry about yesterday? Asked Mineta, carefully looking over his shoulder at the scowling blonde. I don't think he's ever not angry, Mineta, said Midoriya with a chuckle, as he took a bite of a triangular sandwich in his hands. This caused the short-statured boy to laugh with a greenette, which caused Bakugo to twitch in anger in the distance. Though the pain of his injuries pulsated throughout his body, it stopped him from pursuing any retribution for the apparent jokes made at his expense. Hey, Baku bro, take it easy, man. Midoriya probably didn't mean anything by it, Kirishima said as he sat to the side of the atomic blonde and taking a swig of his drink. After gulping the beverage down, Kirishima slammed it onto the table before giving a determined look. Next time, you and I will team up, Kirishima said, only to be met with a blank but still obviously annoyed face from Bakugo. Sweat rolled down the side of the boy's face as the silence was followed by the blonde lifting his working hand and making an obscene gesture towards the hardening quirk user. The two teens began to bicker amongst themselves as Midoriya locked eyes with a pink-tinted girl on the bench across the mess hall. This girl was part of his homeroom class, though she was easily the most distinct, hair and flesh the color of a cherry blossom with eyes that one could only describe as alien. While attempting to swallow his food, he noticed the girl wink his way, which immediately caused him to turn red and choke on the chewed bread and luncheon meat. Gripping his throat, Midoriya stood, his skin turning blue, green, and back to normal in rapid succession. The entire time, the boy's esophagus was clogged. The dwarven boy at his side continued to ramble on about the girls in the school, his obscene comments going without response. You gotta admit, Midoriya, you a have S rank babes, am I right? Asked Mineta, his cheeks rosy as his perverse thoughts pranced around his mind. Then, when low coughing could be heard, he turned to inquire about the lack of response. Noticing his friend's head now changed to the color purple, matching his own shade, he screamed in shock, alerting the rest of the teens in the vicinity. Some began to worry as others started to approach, though when the grape-haired boy attempted to slam his palms against the back of Midoriya, his clothing caved in as Midoriya turned to slime. The sudden splatter of cyan slime across the cafeteria brought an immediate silence to all in attendance. The gray uniform of the green-haired boy now draped across the table, along with a splatter of slime across the floor. Then, after a few awkward seconds of silence, the sound of someone throwing up in the distance caused everyone to retch in disgust, except for a specific few. Hey, it's not that bad. Ribbit, commented Oswi, her face unimpressed by the commotion. The pink-skinned girl crossed her arms and sighed before chiming in with her comments. So what? It's just a bit of slime. Not like I can hurt you. The girl lifted her palms that now glistened with a viscous residue that overflowed to the ground, causing it to erode on touch. Or maybe it can. <laughs> she teased, giggling to herself. Oswe rolled her eyes at the comment. The translucent cyan slime then reconstituted itself away from the uniform as Midoriya stood in his specialized hero costume, which he wore underneath his clothing. His head tilted downward as embarrassment overwhelmed him. His awkward nature, once again, caused him to give off a bad first impression. Or at least, that's what it seemed. Yo, yeah, dude, I thought you were a gunner, said Mineta as he yanked on Midoriya's pant leg, a slight tear in his eye. Midoriya's cheeks grew red as a tomato as he walked forward to retrieve his clothing and leave the room, only for his actions to be interrupted by a loud siren that sung throughout the school. Light flashed in the room as an emergency alert system was triggered. It seemed the grounds of Yue had been infiltrated. The students quickly got to their feet, and the previous commotion due to the slime incident had ceased. And this new event had incited chaos amongst the teens. As they slowly turned his head, Midoriya was suddenly trampled by the sea of students that rapidly made their way through the doors of the mess hall to seek refuge. Hey, you jerk! You can't just run someone over! yelled Mineta as he was promptly kicked over by the masses while attempting to chastise their wild behavior. Once the wave of students exited the room, Midoriya was seen, flattened on the floor like a pancake, as he had been during the entrance exams all those months ago. Oh great, this again? gurgled the flattened puddle as a burst of familiar laughter erupted in the distance. It seemed that Bakugo's humor had returned. Midoriya, 
Are you all right? Ida asked as he dashed rapidly onto the scene, having been shuffled away by the crowds too quickly to have assisted earlier. After he adjusted his glasses, Ida began to dramatically chop the air, rambling on about the non-heroic behavior of their peers to his immediate friend group. I, I'm good, Midoriya replied as he forced his body once more into a human form and dusted himself off as he stood. His cheeks were still rosy from the embarrassment suffered in front of the majority of the school. The boy silently walked forward to join the evacuation, only for the pink-skinned girl to speak up. Hey, Jelly Boy! The nickname caught the emerald-eyed boy by surprise, turning his head to see Mina Ashido walking towards him. His cheeks once more darkened as she was the catalyst that caused the situation to happen in the first place. Forget about all those losers. Just have fun with it. With quirks as weird as ours, it's bound to happen. The girl playfully punched the teen's shoulder, which jiggled like gelatin from the impact. Her words caused a slight smile to appear on his face, the blow to his ego being softened somehow. The protesting voice of Ida continued as the group followed the multitude out into the main hall. This is unacceptable. We need to find a semblance of order. He yelled as the students cluttered, blocking the singular pathway they needed to follow for escape. Then, with quick thinking, Ida came up with a plan. Using Uaraka in their class for a boost, being levitated by her quirk, Ida blasted the engines on his calves and began to spin in the air until he landed above a large entrance, holding his body for dear life. Before speaking, he looked out the window, only to see the crowds of media that were previously causing trouble in the morning had broken into the school. It seemed this was a false alarm. Taking a deep breath, the boy then whistled loudly, catching the attentions of the panicked students below. Fellow students of UA, please listen to me. Do not panic. His hand gripped tightly to metal piping that laid against the wall, his pose awkward and hilarious, causing some of the panic to be replaced by laughter. This is no villain attack. It is just the media. See for yourselves. Out the window. The agitated youths then began to follow the instruction of the blue-haired boy, seeing that his words rang true. But fortunately, all that was outside were the press causing trouble as they always have. Nevertheless, the revelation caused many of the students to regret their previous actions quickly. The boy above them began chastising them for not behaving like the heroes they strove to be at their prestigious academy. After the dust settled and the press removed from the premises, it was time to investigate the break-in. The many school staff members, including their security team, began to look for clues around the gates. Aizawa knelt down near the gate, seeing one of the many mechanisms of the entrance having been disintegrated. His darkened eyes fixated on the ash that now ran through his fingertips, suspicions high. This couldn't be the work of the press. Who could have done this? Questioned the wild-haired man as he began to analyze the situation and hoped no one dangerous had managed to sneak into the campus, as this would be disastrous. Later on, Class 1A had been reconvened to their homeroom, as a particular exercise had been set up for the rest of the day. Now out of his yellow sleeping bag, Aizawa spoke up in front of the class. We're going to be taking a trip to a special facility outside of campus for another training exercise. The lazy words of their teacher caused the students to smile and mutter in excitement. However, Aizawa continued providing instructions to the unruly teens. Suit up. You can bring either your entire costumes or a mix and match of gear. It's up to you. You're the ones lugging it around. The entirety of Class 1A wore their hero costumes and proceeded outside to a white van that awaited them. Quickly taking leadership of directing the group, Class Representative Tenya Ida attempted to instruct his classmates to behave and enter the van with calm and order, which fell on deaf ears most of the time. The class divided evenly on both sides of the van. Bakugo specifically chose the one opposite Midoriya, glaring at him the entire time, his domino mask accentuating his furrowed brows. The first group began laughing at the ridiculousness of the earlier situation at school. Then they began to describe their quirks, which garnered the attention of the slimy teen. It seemed he wasn't the only boy with slime-like powers. Both Ashido and Asui could produce similar substances, which helped the trio gain confidence in each other. 
All the while, Mineta whimpered with jealousy from the attention Midoriya had garnered from the various girls in their class. Arriving at their destination, the students were met with a large dome structure, which caused the class to admire with their jaws agape. As they exited the van, they were ushered inside by their teacher Aizawa, only to be met by a spacesuit-wearing individual at the entrance of the multifaceted arena. Welcome, students, to the Unforeseen Situation Joint, or USJ for short, said a feminine voice from a gender-neutral spacesuit, their gloved palms outstretching to welcome the teens within. Midoriya's eyes sparkled, realizing who the white-garbed individual was before them. It's the rescue hero, 13, Midoriya happily said, his fanboy nature coming to the forefront, which caused the interrupted pro to stumble on their words, as they rubbed the back of their head to attempt to regain composure. Y yes I am 13 and I'm here to help train you kids in search and rescue tactics. The special area was made with this in mind. As you can see, it is divided into various zones, with several emergencies occurring on each side. 13 said, as they showed the burning buildings in the background, artificial landscapes, sinking ships, and many other various situations. The spectacular arena caused the teens to mutter and converse in excitement, as they wanted to jump into action immediately. Everyone will get a chance to participate, just calm down. Ida said as he chopped the air for dramatic effect. But in the distance, a strange sight began to appear. Midoriya squinted towards the horizon and began to walk past 13, only for his eyes to widen. A cold chill ran down his spine. Mr. Aizawa! Midoriya grabbed the attention of his teacher, who was prepared to chastise the boy, only to see the origin of this shock. Before the students could react, purple voids began to emerge throughout the USJ, as crowds of dangerous individuals marched out from the shadows. A man with a black cloud appeared from the leading portal, followed by another with multiple hands attached to his arms and face. Soon, from the portal, another creature emerged. A massive, muscular monster, its brain exposed in its skull, with wild, bulging eyes in full display. It's an ambush, mumbled Aizawa, as his hair began to stand on end and his scarf began to flail into the air as a red glow emanated from his eyes. As an instructor, he would not allow these villains to lay a finger on his students, even if it cost him his life. A multitude of dark portals filled the arena, with dozens upon dozens of dangerous villains flooding into the open space. Midoriya moved back and hid behind his teacher. This was no test. It was an invasion. Both Thirteen and Aizawa stepped forward, ready to defend their students. Everyone, make your way to the exit and alert UA. Thirteen, go protect the kids. I'll hold them off until backup arrives. The students protested, not wanting to leave the pros to handle the villains alone, but they were met by stern glares. A few of the students did as they were told and began stepping back towards the large doors. As they turned to run, another portal appeared, blocking the exit. No way in hell am I leaving all the fun to you! screamed Bakugo as he rocketed towards the main group of villains, his explosions propelling him through the air. Joining the atomic blonde was Kirishima, who used his hardening quirk on his arms. But just as the two approached the shadowy figure and the man with hands surrounding his body, another black portal appeared. My, my, are you children in this much of a rush to die? said the well-dressed shadow villain, his arms firmly behind his back, unmoving at the approaching students. The spectral mists began to engulf the students, their surroundings now shrouded in darkness. All the while, the multitude of villains continued their steps towards the heroes. According to the curriculum we procured yesterday, All Might was supposed to be with this group. A pity. This caused the man with hands to twitch uncontrollably and scratch at his neck anxiously. His eyes focused as he looked toward the surrounded students and teachers. As he balled up his fist, the gray-haired man growled in anger. This is disappointing. I bet if we kill those brats, that bastard will show. The venom in his voice caused fear to be instilled into some of the members of UA especially Mineta, who shook timidly. 
His eyes watered up as he ran to Midoriya's side and grabbed his leg. The shocked slime quirk user broke his concentration on the villains as he felt his leg being gripped. T take it easy, Mineta. I'm sure All Might will show up. Eventually. Commented the Green Net, who gulped hard while the shadows began to close in. Using the banter between the villains as an opportunity to strike, Aizawa jumped into action with his goggles covering his eyes and his hair standing on end. His capture scarf launched like a whip towards one of the villains and grabbed a hold of their arm. The villain attempted to trigger his quirk, but it was to no avail, for it had been nullified. The villain's eyes opened wide as he was yanked upwards aggressively. A heel crashed into his mouth and dislodged several teeth, spraying blood upon impact. Jumping away from the villain, the black-haired man centered himself as the crowd of villains surrounded him. His body was now crouched in a combat-ready stance, and the villains noticed that their quirks were not working. In frustration, they began jumping into battle, but were easily dispatched by the pro. Meanwhile, the shadow villain stepped forward and vanished into a portal before appearing near 13 and the students. The teens were getting antsy, knowing that their escape plan had been foiled, and a powerful villain was now challenging them. We are the League of Villains, and our goal is to snuff out the symbol of peace, All Might. The air grew cold as the man's words frightened the teens. As the shadows surrounded them, Bakugo and Kirishima launched into action. Bakugo's hands were primed for explosions, while Kirishima's fists were hardened and ready to deal heavy blows. But their actions were for naught, as their strikes went right through the villain. The dust settled, and the man was not harmed. But before the two could act once more, they and most of their classmates were consumed by the darkness. The teens vanished into the purple-black smoke portals, leaving only some of the students of Yue to face the villain. With his vision shrouded in darkness, Midoriya couldn't help but panic as his senses were drowned in nothing but shadows. Soon, the feeling of falling quickly overwhelmed him as he was spat out from the black portal over a man-made lake. His eyes widened and bulged out comically as he could see several villains already in the water awaiting their prey. Thinking quickly, he transformed his body into slime and quickly condensed into a sphere, which caused him to sink into the water. His cyan coloring disguised him as his body made contact with the water. Just when Midoriya felt safe, from the dark waters, a shark-like man struck at him and attempted to consume him. Due to the sudden environmental change, the boy's mind went blank as the jagged toothed jaws of the villain approached. Before the assailant could chomp down on the slimy sphere, a mighty kick connected with the jaw of the man, sending him down into the depths. After the initial shock wore off, he noticed that his savior was the frog girl, Su Yu Asui. Pointing upwards, the green-suited girl rapidly made her way up and out of the water, while Midoriya followed closely behind. Hopping out of the water, the amphibious girl landed onto a ship in the center of the man-made lake. Just as his head poked out of the water, Midoriya found a flailing and nearly drowning Mineta, surrounded by villains. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you want to learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered. And with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free. Link in the description below. I'm coming, buddy! Shouted the Slime Sphere as he began to spin in place, displacing the water around him before shooting towards his friend's location. Gliding over the surface of the water, the Slime Boy crashed into the face of one of the attackers, ricocheted onto another, then another successfully hitting them all square in the face. The speed of the strike caused the usually soft slime to impact the villains with similar force to a soccer ball being kicked by a pro athlete. Using the distraction, 
Asui launched her tongue out to grab the purple dwarf, rescuing him from danger. After bouncing off a final villain's face, Midoriya used the momentum to throw himself upwards and joined his classmates on the ship. After falling into Asui's arms, Midoriya formed a thumbs up in his slime sphere form. Nice catch, complimented the greenette, until he noticed how close he was to the girl's body, which quickly caused his sphere form to destabilize and melt right through her fingers before puddling on the ground. In response, the dark-haired girl tilted her head in confusion and scratched her cheek as Midoriya attempted to reconstitute his human form. S -s -s sorry gurgled the slime boy as his body recovered. His cheeks were redder than a tomato. All the while, Mineta shot daggers of jealousy at the closeness the two shared in the moment. Well, if you two are done being weird, what are we gonna do, Ribbit? Asked the frog girl as she peered over the edge, looking down at the villains that observed carefully, who were waiting to strike. It seemed they were waiting for something, but what could it be? The freckled boy joined his companions and attempted to make sense of the situation. The boy began to mumble to himself, his classmates' voices being drowned out by his incisive muttering. Midoriya. Hey, Midoriya! The voice of the frog girl remained muted to the muttering teen, until a glob of slime hit him on the side of the head. The viscous, translucent ooze ran down the side of his face, as Midoriya blinked multiple times, having been forcefully taken out of his trance. After a few seconds, the freckled youth began to laugh and wiped the slime off before smiling at Asui. Sorry about that. Even though it's scary, Midoriya said, his gaze going back to the villains in the water, as well as the multitude of villains at the entrance area. We need to fight, but first, we gotta take care of these guys. The juniper-haired boy punched his palm and furrowed his brows. A firm, determined gaze appeared on his face. I got a plan! The trio huddled together for a few minutes as the emerald-eyed teen began to inform everyone of his strategy. Mineta gave his friend a nervous thumbs up as sweat trickled down his face, while Asui did the same. Jumping onto the ledge of the boat, Midoriya turned around, giving his back to the water. Good luck, waved the boy as he fell backwards into the water before shifting into slime halfway down. Once in the water, the slime team began to spin in place and displace the water around him. As the villains noticed that the team who had previously struck them had returned to their domain, they began rushing towards his location. As the villains homed in on his location, Midoriya rocketed towards one of the villains, bounced off the evildoer's head and into the air. As the slime boy reached a high altitude, Asui's tongue stretched out and wrapped around the slime sphere, throwing him back down with full momentum and hitting another villain in the face. This action continued until most of the villains were either hurt or unconscious. When he was back in the air, Midoriya was caught by Asui, who pulled him and Mineta over the water and away from danger. While escaping the water zone, Mineta launched a barrage of his sticky balls, which attached to the villains, keeping them both afloat and stuck together. Elsewhere, Shoto Todoroki and Toru Hagakure were back to back, surrounded by villains. The bicolored teen held his stoic expression as his arm frosted over, ready to fight the onslaught of villains. The invisible girl held her gloved hands up, showing she was in a combat stance. Fists ready to fight. Stay out of the way. I'll handle these lackeys. The girl looked back, only to see a massive wall of ice encapsulate the villains in the area. Suddenly, from below, a villain emerged from the ground, causing the earth to displace from beneath Todoroki. Unable to avoid the attack fully, the boy in white braced for impact by lifting an ice barrier to defend himself. At that moment, Hagakure's silhouette began to shine. A bright light radiated throughout her body, and tendrils of electricity sparked throughout. Due to the sudden nature of the surprise attack, Hagakure could not jump in to intercept, but there was an ace up her sleeve. Outstretching her hands, she shut her eyes before she announced her attack. Light refraction! 
As an intense wave of light shot through the area, the electricity around the girl crackled as the blast of light shined around them, widening and reflecting off the ice and causing a remarkable light show. The unprepared villain caught the bulk of the rays of light as his pupils shrank. His eyes made an attempt to shut as his retinas burned from the intense rays. Todoroki's eyes were half-closed during the blast, but the light show was so intense that his vision was suddenly snuffed out. A great deal of the USJ was illuminated suddenly, which caught the attention of everyone. After a second had passed, the attacking villain retched on the ground, his hands gripping his face as tears of blood ran down his face. Falling back, Todoroki had his palm on his face, his eyes red from the exposure. The light silhouette then began to dissipate, and all that remained were Hagakure's gloves and boots. She ran over to Todoroki and kneeled by his side. Oh my gosh, T -t Todoroki, I'm so sorry, are, are you okay? The voice of the girl was erratic as she placed her hand on the boy's shoulder, though his serious expression was not replaced with one of pain. I... I can't see, mumbled the teen as he lowered his palm, showing his reddened eyes with blank white pupils. While the teens attempted to recover themselves from the sudden show of power, Aizawa continued his fight against the invading villains. The consistent use of his quirk was draining his eyesight, which caused gaps to appear in his defense. Every now and then, a villain managed to land a hit. Taking advantage of a lapse between erasures, the man covered in hands decided to enter the battle. A group of villains began assaulting the teacher. Moving swiftly through the attacks, Aizawa managed to defend himself, but he had miscalculated. Suddenly, an intense, bone-chilling pain sparked from his elbow, looking back only to meet the dastardly eyes of the hand-decorated villain. Ignoring the pain, the crimson eyes of the stealth hero nullified the decay quirk. Then, following the erasure, a quick fist knocked the man with dried skin back, sending him to the ground. Two more villains attempted to strike Aizawa, but failed to do anything of note. Suddenly, a powerful figure cast a shadow over Aizawa. Hey, what's happening everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and have I got a brand new video for you. Welcome to part 6 of What If Deku Had a Slime Quirk. Please, sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. With that little intro out of the way, let's get on with the story, shall we? Aizawa squirmed as the giant hand of the beaked monster wrapped around his throat and lifted his body into the air. Oxygen began to grow exceedingly scarce as he started getting desperate. The stealth hero's hair began to stand on end while a scarlet glow emanated from his grated goggles. The strength of the beast loosened enough for the man to slip out of its grasp before sliding between its legs and jumping away. Damn it, that was too close for comfort, grunted the ebony-haired man as he jumped back and forth from more incoming villains in the immediate vicinity. His capture scarf grabbed and slammed the opposition as he passed, attempting to subdue the majority of the crowd during his movements. Aizawa had spent an extended amount of time using his quirk, which caused his eyes to dry out and his vision to blur. Once the onslaught of villains had been settled for the most part, he believed he would have at least a moment to rest. Though, when he allowed himself to stop, a sharp and terrible pain began pulsating throughout his arm as he felt five fingers grabbing onto his elbow. As he looked back, Aizawa could see one of the primary villains of the attack the man wrapped in disembodied hands. Due to the villain's quirk, the sight of his touch began disintegrating, Aizawa's elbow almost completely skinless as the deterioration began to spread. Aizawa knew that if he allowed this to continue, it would mean the end of him and his students, so he forced his body forward. Aizawa's eyes began to glow once more, triggering his quirk. Using this opportunity, Aizawa launched his scarf, which wrapped around the wrist of the hand villain, allowing Aizawa to use his momentum and slam the man into the ground. As he jumped back, Aizawa gripped his now decayed elbow as he fought back the pain. In his moment of weakness, 
A massive black hand gripped the top of his skull and lifted him up into the air as his injured arm was violently twisted behind him. The ebony-haired man held in his screams as blood began to flow down his face. The pressure that held him was threatening to cave his skull in. The hand-covered villain stood within Aizawa's line of sight as his quirk was nullified. But before anything else could happen, a ball of cyan slime slammed into the gray-haired villain's face and sent him backwards, while knocking the hand off the villain's face. M my nose! You bastard! I'll kill you! shrieked the pale-skinned man as his eyes teared from the blow. With his visions blurred and his senses distorted, the villain aimed randomly towards the direction of the teens. No, Moo! Destroy these brats! With just a mention of the monstrosity's name, the beaked beast slammed the injured man against the ground and lunged towards the defenseless teens. As it dashed forward, things seemed to move in slow motion as the Nomu approached, leaving the two teens paralyzed. During the debacle, they seemed to have forgotten that the slime projectile wasn't an inanimate object, but another combatant. The translucent glob of slime suddenly wrapped itself around the head of the ebony-skinned creature, causing it distress. The artificial monster attempted to remove the semi-fluid that now covered its head, but every time it reached, the slime moved away from its grasp. In frustration, the beast balled up its fist and launched a strike towards its own face, though at the very last second, the slime slid away from the head and down the creature's back. The powerful knuckles of the creature cracked against its own jaw, causing it to stagger. Wobbling from the pain, the vision of the Nomu blurred momentarily as its retinas were detached and regenerated quickly thereafter. Shaking off the cobwebs, the beast then reached back and attempted to grab the slime that now rested at the center of its back. Though due to the creature's large muscular frame, it couldn't reach. The creature screamed wildly as it forced its muscle fibers to stretch and tear, the joints and cartilage cracking as it attempted to reach its target. Just when the Nomu reached the slime hero, he immediately crawled under the arms and towards the creature's stomach. Reacting to the movement, the beaked demon moved its mangled arms forward and slammed its fists together into a hammer-like shape into its abdomen. But just like before, it missed entirely and injured itself. As it fell to its knees, the creature squeaked out a thin breath as blood began to pool and fall from its sharp teeth. Its breath was completely expelled from its lungs as the stomach collapsed. From the shoulder of the creature, a sphere of cyan slime appeared, with a condescending look on its translucent face. Tired yet, bird boy? As a slimy question mark protruded from his semi-liquid form. As he witnessed the ordeal from afar, Shigaraki stood, wiping away the blood from his nose, and began approaching Nomu from behind, with the slime in his crosshairs. You stupid, mindless beast! I'll do it myself! screamed the man as he reached out to grab the ball of slime, but missed and instead grabbed a hold of the massive shoulder of the Nomu. Its shoulder and upper arm began to decay immediately, which prompted the anti-symbol of peace to screech loudly while it reached for its decaying arm, and in desperation, tore it off from its socket, causing blood to spray all over the hand villain and across the ground. As it shakingly stood upright, the dismembered Nomu began to roar, while tendrils of muscle began to rapidly form from the torn shoulder. In a matter of seconds, its arm had regenerated. Its scarred black skin recoated the muscle, as if it had never been lost. Midoriya jumped into the air. His slimy eyes popped out of his head in shock. The two villains' attention then settled back on the slime boy, who was now in the shape of a mochi ball across from them. A wide grin formed on the face of the white-haired man as he stretched his arms out and began to chuckle. No, Moo! Kill this arrogant brat! Screamed the hysterical villain as the hulking monster rushed forward towards the slime boy once more. But suddenly, a glove-shaped fist made contact with the jaw of the hand villain and sent him flying backward. 
a gust of wind followed the strike, as the boots and gloves of Hagakure could be seen in place of the villain. H Hagakure? That was awesome! shouted Mineta, who finally snapped out of his trance-like state, as he witnessed his classmate come to their rescue. Asui quickly jumped out of the water and was about to approach the invisible girl, until she was stopped by her. You guys should really get out of here. Midori and I can take it from here. Hagakure then gave a thumbs up and seemed to jump away, as a gust of wind blew back the hair of the frog-like teen. All the while, Mineta looked on, disappointed that he had been blatantly ignored. The two students quickly ran off to regroup with the others back at the entrance, where it so happened that the remaining members of Class 1A had managed to cause a distraction and allowed Class Representative Tenya Ida to escape the building and call for help. As the teens faced off against the shadow villain, a familiar presence joined the fray, the anger-prone blonde Bakugo, as well as the scarlet-haired Kirishima. You idiots are still fighting this asshole! shouted the blonde as his teeth were bared with excitement for the battle. Even though he was fighting at 50% strength, Bakugo's arrogance and thrill for battle still prevailed. Kirishima was about to interject, but decided against it, realizing that the villains they dispatched earlier were child's play compared to what they were about to face. No need to worry, children. Your corpses will make an excellent debut for the League of Villains. Warned the shadow villain, as his voice sent chills down everyone's spines. Thirteen, having assisted Ida's escape, could now focus on the villain. Opening their glove, tremendous suction power began pulling the shadow villain in, but it was countered by a portal that appeared between the two. The exit portal opened behind the rescue hero and began to tear the back of their suit clean off. Seeing the damage Thirteen had received, the grouping of teens rushed forward in defense of their instructor. Somewhere in the distance was the bicolored teen Todoroki, who sat behind Rubble out of danger with a strip of cloth covering his eyes. Hagakure managed to put the teen down in a safe space while she went to back up Aizawa and their classmates. Damn it, I'm useless in my condition, said the heterochromatic teen as he balled up his fist in frustration as a cool mist began to flow around his right hand. At this point, his eyes had experienced great trauma due to the powerful flash of light by the invisible girl. The special maneuver had saved them momentarily, but now their firepower had been affected, with Todoroki left essentially unable to battle. Even though he was blind, Todoroki made a barrier of ice. At least he could keep himself safe. What the hell hit me? shouted the hand villain as he began recovering from his random assault. Just when he managed to get to his feet, he was struck by an uppercut that lifted him in the air. Following the upward strike, a kick connected in his gut and sent him backwards. Anger continued building on the face of the villain as he gripped his stomach. Damn it all! Fight me like a man, you coward! spat the villain in frustration, while blood spilled from his mouth. How about a girl? Asked the invisible teen, as she landed a flurry of punches that rocked the villain. To an outsider's point of view, the gray-haired man was fighting the air, and the air was winning. His bloodshot eyes looked around in a panic, not knowing where the next hit would come, as the only thing he could see was a pair of gloves and sneakers that just floated across from him. Inconceivable! You brats aren't supposed to be this strong! Before the man could continue his vengeful tirade, a kick landed on the side of his head and sent him spiraling towards the ground. The invisible girl then followed up with an axe kick that landed right on the gut of the villain, causing him to lose his breath. Elsewhere, the Nomu stood across from Adoria, who had formed his slime back to a humanoid form. Strange thoughts began to appear in the boy's mind, as the color of his cyan body began to shift slowly to green. His hands were shaking as his eyes began to glow red. The slimy teen began to speak. Y you, your body, 
stammered the boy as the glow in his eyes intensified while the tone began to deepen. You'd make a perfect skin suit, he screamed as he suddenly shot towards the beaked monstrosity. The green slime then formed into a sort of tendril that grabbed hold of the creature's face. Though the Nomu attempted to remove the slime, it began to move towards its open mouth, forcing its way down their throat. Soon after the slime had been ingested by the beast, after a moment of silence, the muscled behemoth reached and grabbed hold of its throat. The creature began to squirm uncontrollably as it slammed its head against the ground. Within the Nomu, the slime began to stretch and expand, filling in the entirety of the creature's respiratory system and nasal cavities. Though the monster attempted to scream, only a deafened gurgle could escape it as it began to squirm on the ground, the loss of oxygen shocking its system. In deep desperation, the creature began clawing at its chest, ripping the flesh that would quickly heal. Its fingernails broke the surface, trying to rip its own chest open in order to remove the foreign substance that clogged its body. The pulsating, exposed brain of the creature began to discolor and twitch, as the lack of a working respiratory system began killing the brain cells of the beast. Blood violently squirted out of the exposed chest of the Nomo as its movements soon slowed. Its eyes bulged out, veins popping from the distress. After several minutes, the muscular being stopped moving, and its brain now a dull white. While its eyes glossed over, its heart stopped. Aswi and Mineta had seen the horrific encounter from a distance and began shaking in fear. The dwarven boy's mouth was agape, tears rolling down his cheeks as he feared for his very life. All the while, Aswi gulped, hoping their classmate was all right. From the open mouth of the corpse, the green slime began to flood outward, pooling on the ground. The semi-liquid began to grow until it returned to its human form. Midoriya stood tall above the monster, his eyes still red as a look of frustration and disgust rested on his face. The freckled teen spat towards the creature as he began scanning the area for the other villain. Midoriya! The sound of his name caused the juniper-haired boy to jerk his head back and lock eyes with Aswi, who stood with a defiant look. Upon realizing his friends were safe, his red eyes flickered back to their emerald tone. His expression softened immediately. Hey guys, are you okay? Yelled the hero in training as he waved his hands in the air and began approaching his friends. Mineta's nerves began spiraling out of control. The vision of the green net taking the life of that creature made him fear for his own life. Taking a step back, the boy's attempt at an escape was thwarted by the frog girl, who held on to his arm. Just when Midoriya was about to reach his classmates, a scream grabbed hold of his attention. During the ensuing battle between the hand villain and Hagakure, the evildoer managed to put his hands on the girl, decaying part of her arm. The effect of the quirk caused the spot to now contrast with her form, as it was now a visible blackened spot, where a momentary touch had landed. With no hesitation, the juniper-haired boy quickly morphed into a slime state and dashed to provide backup. As the pale-haired man was about to lunge forward and place his hands on the semi-invisible teen, a wall of slime seemed to splash between the two like a wave. Though as the hand of the villain made contact, nothing occurred to the congealed construct. W what That's impossible! spat the man as he forced both his palms towards the slime. But just as before, nothing occurred. Taking the opportunity, Hagakure ignored her injury and went around the slime and managed to land a powerful kick that sent the villain back, colliding into a grouping of villains. The villains, now without their secret weapon, were at a disadvantage. The shadow villain, who was now barely able to fight back against the teens due to them locking down on his metal brace, called out. Master Shigaraki 
It's best we take our leave. The hand villain glared daggers at the heroes in training as he ground his teeth and scratched his neck raw. He knew full well retreat was the only option. Promptly, the misty portals began opening once more and allowed the MOBA villains and the one named Shigaraki to escape. This isn't the last you've seen of the League of Villains. You brats will pay. Along with your symbol of ineptitude! Warned the man, though his gaze settled on Midoriya. And you... I'll see you again. Threatened the villain, as he managed to escape just seconds before the doors to the USJ were blown wide open by an angered All Might. His usual wide grin had been replaced by a face of resolve and violence. Though his expression quickly changed to that of confusion, as the only villains left were the ones defeated and unconscious. Have no fear, for I... am here? Soon after, additional heroes, paramedics, and police began to arrive on the scene. Dozens among dozens of villains were put into shackles and sent away, while Midoriya sat in a corner, a blanket wrapped around his shoulders. The emerald-eyed boy looked on as the heroes transported the lifeless body of the Nomu. Due to the nature of the attack, the teens were not charged for using their quirks in battle, as it was in self-defense. Although, detectives would approach the boy, for he was the only one to have taken a life. The injured heroes, Aizawa and Thirteen, were carted away in an ambulance, though the paramedics held high hopes of a speedy recovery. After the teens were sent back to the infirmary at UA, the ones in good health were allowed to return back to their homes. Most of the teens only received minor wounds, but there was one casualty amongst the members of Class 1A. Todoroki had been seen by Recovery Girl and additional medical staff regarding his failing eyesight. Their diagnosis was that the boy had a temporary loss of 90% of his eyesight due to the intense ultraviolet light exposure. They surmised the boy's vision would return, but it would be several weeks until it could fully recover. Thanks to the old woman's quirk, the son of Endeavor had managed to leave with his eyesight at 70%, though he would have to wear protective sunglasses for the time being. At the gates of Yue, Todoroki was about to get in a car that would return him home, until he heard a familiar voice call out to him. Not being able to see properly, the boy didn't bother to move his head to find the source, knowing that the person calling out was also the person who placed him in his predicament. Oh my gosh, Todoroki, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I did this to you. Please forgive me. It's fine. I'll be alright. At least we're alive. The two said their farewells as Todoroki was driven away, leaving Invisible Girl all alone at the school grounds. A large hand rested on the girl's shoulder. The teen glanced back and could see it was All Might. The two shared a smile before walking off to discuss what had occurred in detail. Later that night, Midoriya lay on his bed, his eyes fixated on the oscillating fan above him. The image of the dead Nomu haunted his consciousness, while the words of the boss villain still rang in his ear. The boy laid still for hours, the result of his actions had haunted him. Worse was the fact that he had no recollection of his actions once he faced the beast one on one. What on earth happened? What have I become? Whispered Midoriya as his exhaustion finally overwhelmed him and he fell into a deep sleep to recover his energy for the following day of his heroic education. And that's our video for the day, so thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go, there's a little bit of housekeeping. First, We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description. So please, feel free to check out all the other incredible content our team creates. Second, on behalf of We the Celestials, I also want to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. So that's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. 
And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome. This has been Tim. Mustache out. Traffic events at the USJ. The police and UA staff convened together to debrief the facts of the criminal activity. The meeting was headed by both Inspector Naomasa Sukauchi and the principal of the academia, Nezu. The bipedal bear-like man sat with a gentle smile on his face, seemingly blissful during this stressful investigation. Thank you for meeting with us today, Detective. It is imperative we find out how these events transpired and how to prevent them in the future, said the principal as he raised his paw in the air, his childish demeanor shining through his words. A small grin formed on the face of the stone-faced detective, who shuffled a folder in his hands. Yes, I agree. Though the appearance of this group of criminals poses a greater threat in the long run, usually criminal organizations have logical goals of either obtaining riches, power, or influence in our society. But these... villains seem different. The detective then spread several folders with the blurred security images they had of the apparent big players in the association, with the names provided by students, though the detective kept a single folder separate for the time being. He seemed puzzled as he spoke openly about the data collected on the villains. The only information they managed to find regarding the villains were only within days of the attack, but nothing about their history or motives. These two, the ones called Shigaraki and Kuragiri, they seemed to be in leadership roles in the League, but something about the events that transpired disturbed me. Tsukauchi paused as he opened the final folder in his palm, which was parted in two, one with a familiar Greenette's image, and the other with a mugshot of the sludge villain. Passing the file to Nezu, the ivory furred educator began looking through images and data points on Quirk's similarity. One of your students, Izuku Midoriya, seems to have an uncanny similarity with the Quirk of this convicted villain, only known by the alias of Sludge Villain, as the media has dubbed him. Nezu closed his eyes and shut the folder, sliding it back towards the detective. Smiling softly, the principal outstretched both his arms in a childish manner. I understand your worries, detective, but I can assure you that Mr. Midoriya has no connection with this villain, though the two had an apparent altercation prior to him joining the academy. All applicants go through a deep investigation before being accepted into our campus, and young Midoriya was no exception. After some back and forth between the detective and the staff, they came to an understanding of not pursuing the boy further, though the detective did inform that he would be looking into how the boy progressed through his hero studies. Due to the attack on the students of Class 1A, the classes for the teens had been cancelled for the next 48 hours to allow them to heal and prepare for their continued studies. Within the Class 1A homeroom sat the grape-haired teen Minoru Mineta, fiddling with his phone. A string of unanswered text messages flooded his screen. The name of the contact in question was Izuku Midoriya. A worried look was on Mineta's face as he continued texting on end with no response in sight, being left on red. Hey Mineta, any word of Midoriya? Asked Suyu. Her head tilted, awaiting the boy's reply. The routinary ribbit caused him to jump from his desk and have his mobile device slip from his palms and fall onto the floor. Quickly, the boy leaned over to grab the fallen phone, only to fall over, desk and all. The students all glanced over to the fallen Mineta, but after seeing who had crashed, they immediately looked away, ignoring the incident. After composing himself and steadying his desk and chair, the boy put away his phone and sighed, his cheeks glowing red from the momentary embarrassment. I've been calling and texting him for the past two days and nothing! Hope the guy's okay! The frog girl placed her finger on her lip to think, remembering the USJ and how the slime teen was questioned by the police and just barely let go due to how his battle concluded. The memories of the monstrous creature mutilating itself to survive the ordeal shocked her back into reality. I haven't been able to reach him either. Things grew silent for a moment, until the doors to the room slid open and a familiar greenette appeared. Though, before Mineta and Suyu could approach him, a black-haired mummy entered the room behind him. All of the students reacted loudly to the teacher, who even after suffering terrible injuries, was back in class as if nothing happened. The bandaged man stepped in front of his students and prompted them to settle down. 
a light red glow shined through the wrappings around his eyes. Some of the less intimidated youths still protested on the presence of their teacher, thinking he'd best be resting and healing from his wounds. This, just a flesh wound, choked the bandaged man, which caused his students to let out a heavy sigh at the corniness of the attempted joke. After the murmurings and protests ended, the wild-haired man cleared his throat before finally starting the school day. Now that the excitement is over, I have an announcement. In two weeks' time, we'll be having the annual UA Sports Festival. Some of the hero hopefuls began protesting about the reasoning for the festival taking place. Since just two days ago, they were attacked by villains. The teens were concerned that the security of the school might still be compromised. Was it really such a good idea? Enough. For that very reason is why we're having the sports festival. We must show the world that one attack from villains will not stop us. UA will not be intimidated. Concerning security, we will have pro heroes and law enforcement ready to jump into action. The words of the teacher calmed the worries of the students. The sports festival was to proceed as originally scheduled, showing both the villains and the media that they would not be swayed. During their time at the prestigious Hero Academy, the sports festival was their moment to show off and present themselves to the world. The slime hero remained rather distant and silent during the day, avoiding conversation from his classmates. The halls of the school were silent, while the murmurs and whispers of the other students barely reached him. Once entering the cafeteria, a smug-looking blonde locked eyes on the slime teen. So, the infamous villain killer shows his face, shouted the teen as he approached the solitary greenette, a small drop of sweat rolling down his cheek as he was being put on the spot. Gulping audibly, the emerald-eyed boy attempted to reply, but was interrupted immediately. It seems Yue made a mistake, putting such a low life like you in the hero course. What a joke! Is this the pride of 1A? A murderer? The obnoxious teen began laughing loudly, which made a small crowd form around them. The blonde continued goading on Midoriya to no end, stepping into his comfort zone, stepping forward with his foot on the bench. Come on! Step up, killer! The teen bit down hard, his teeth grinding together while the color of his eyes began to flicker from green to red in rapid succession. His breathing became erratic as dark thoughts began coursing through his mind. Though before things could continue to escalate, a massive fist hit the blonde, knocking him out. For crying out loud, Monoma, what is wrong with you? yelled an orange-haired girl, grabbing the unconscious blonde by the jacket. The girl sighed heavily as she began dragging the aggressor away. She bowed slightly towards the stabilizing greenette as a form of apology before leaving the area completely. Midoriya's eyes began to well up with tears as he got up from the lunch table and promptly exited the mess hall, the bell ringing loudly soon thereafter. Through the day, the slime quirk user went missing from his classes, preferring to spend his time on the roof of the school. A saddened look persisted on his face, while he saved his classmates, he indeed took a life, no matter how monstrous it was. The lack of memory he had of the situation haunted him, but the words of the one called Monoma felt like daggers sinking in. Light tears rolled down his face as he sobbed alone, his body losing its stability as it jiggled about. The door behind him began to creak as a familiar purple teen appeared. Midoriya quickly wiped the tears away, but the redness and bloating remained obvious signs of his saddened state. Mineta slowly approached Midoriya and tugged at his pant leg, prompting the teen to look down in his direction. Hey, Mineta, what are you doing here? The freckled boy then forced a smile to appear on his face, but it was unconvincing. While the grape-haired teen had been frightened to no end during the USJ incident, he had two days to think about the situation. His friend had saved his life, not once, but twice in the same day, and his fear was the last thing he needed. The events had struck a nerve, but he wouldn't allow Midoriya to go through it alone. Man, you saved my butt! Thanks for everything! And for being my friend! The perverted teen smiled brightly and raised his thumbs up towards his friend, trying to comfort him. Since the first day of school, the Greenette had suffered some sort of bullying, somehow even more intense than in years prior. His newly found friendships were truly a beacon of light in the dark days. In response, 
Midoriya smiled, his eyes still puffy, and reciprocated a thumbs up back at the boy. After some convincing, Midoriya returned back to the remainder of his classes, getting chastised heavily by Aizawa for skipping some classes. At the end of the school day, Midoriya and Mineta said their farewells and split off into opposite directions. Though after a few seconds of silence, he could hear steps approaching him rapidly. Turning his head to the noise, Midoriya recognized Suyu, who was slightly out of breath from her sprint. M Midoriya, wait up. The two met on the sidewalk. Midoriya was a bit confused by the approach and began rubbing the back of his head. After composing herself, Suyu began glaring towards the boy, which made him nervous. You, you're a real jerk, you know that? said the girl as she pointed towards Midoriya, who began blushing and sweating profusely from the comment. The amber light of the sunset illuminated the two as cars passed by, a slight tension built in the air. It's rude not to answer your phone, ribbit. Along with Mineta, the amphibious girl had also sent a barrage of texts towards his phone, though, unlike Mineta, it was a normal amount of texts. Due to the mental and emotional stress that Midori had experienced after the incident, he remained radio silent to all of his newly found friends. Look, I wanted to... I want you to know that those guys at school are jerks, and you shouldn't listen to them. Ribbit. Midoriya's gaze directed itself towards the ground, seeing that once more another friend was attempting to cheer him up. The feeling of ineptitude and powerlessness in the situation had gotten to him. How was he to be a hero when he allowed things to get to him this way? And back at the USJ, you were my hero. Thanks for saving me. The girl finished her sentence with a warm smile, a light tear glimmering from her eye. The Green Nat's body composition immediately began to destabilize. The color of his body shifted from blue to green and back to normal in quick succession. Though before anything else could happen, the honking of a horn snapped him back to attention. A man with dark skin and webbed hands began waving from his driver's side window towards the amphibious teen. The two glanced back, only for Suyu to recognize her parents, who had appeared to pick her up. Take care of yourself, Midoriya. See you tomorrow, hero, said the girl as she waved towards the greenette before hopping in the vehicle, driving off. Midoriya waved the frog family goodbye as a seed of resolve began to bloom once more in the teen. For the next two weeks, Midoriya and the other students of Class 1A trained their bodies and minds for the upcoming sports festival. The pressure was building for what was to come, and soon enough, the day was finally here. Arriving at the stadium, Midoriya was dressed in his UAPE uniform that had been inlaid with materials similar to that of his hero costume to avoid any national embarrassment in front of the TV cameras. Looking out through a glass viewing booth, Midoriya's eyes widened at the packed crowd in attendance. Each and every seat was full, a spectacle similar to that of the Olympics. Flashes from the past few weeks began passing through his mind, a challenge from 1B, a threat from a general study student, and the unending whispers and rumors between his classmates. This was his moment, the time for the slime hero to make his grand debut. Midoriya smiled widely and turned around to join the rest of his classmates to finally begin his endeavor. And that's our video for the day, so thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go, there's a little bit of housekeeping I want to do. First, We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description, so please, feel free to check out all the other incredible content our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. So that's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have an amazing day! And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome! This has been Tim, Mustache Out! of the crowd lifted the spirits of the multitude of future heroes that stood together at the starting line. Energized from the commencement speech by faculty and fired up by the premature declaration of victory by Katsuki Bakugo, the students of the various UA courses stretched and prepared for the start of the first section of the festival, the obstacle course. At first, all remained silent, 
until the sounds of machinery began to permeate throughout the stadium. Midoriya stood in front of the crowd. His classmates scattered throughout, though Mineta made sure to stand fairly close to his friend and training partner. The two locked eyes and smirked devilish grins as they fist-bumped, ready to begin the race. Bakugo, on the other hand, had his arm in a type of brace. Even though it had been several weeks since the incident, his arm still suffered residual damage. He was cleared to compete, but only if he would wear this device to protect himself from further injury. The ill-tempered boy was not the only one participating at a disadvantage. Shoto Todoroki also was participating in the race, wearing special goggles that were tinted to allow him to see. The bichromatic teen's vision was still dampened from the USJ attack, though it had recovered to at least 60% health by the time of the sports festival. A tremendously loud bell rang throughout as massive mechanized titans began to rise from the ground approaching the teens. This loud sound signaled the beginning of the event, and the partially blinded boy reacted by sending a massive wall of ice towards the first large robot that reached their perimeter. The randomness of the wave of ice took apart the titan, but also froze some students in the process. Following this move, Todoroki began sliding forward on instinct, narrowly avoiding debris as he moved forward. When the initial shock passed, Midoriya triggered his slime quirk and went into a semi-liquid form. Feeling the crowds of students moving forward, his mouth curled into a smile as he began sliding forward in what seemed like random directions. Though when the first wave of students came through, they immediately lost balance and slipped due to a large slime trail. The secondary wave of students then attempted to move forward, but became immobilized due to a minefield of sticky balls attaching themselves to the ground. Using the attached balls on the bottom of his sneakers, Mineta bounced high and above his fellow students and dashed forward. Following the purple boy's lead, a girl in pink jumped over the trapped teens and began sliding forward using her acid quirk for quick, slippery movements. You snooze, you lose, taunted Mina as she made her way to progress in the race. The protests and frustrations from the students could be heard loudly as the crowd cheered on the ingenuity of the hero hopefuls. An incredible explosion then erupted as Bakugo went skyward, gripping his healthy arm beneath his legs like a makeshift rocket. Using his injured arm to steady himself as the winds and propulsion threatened to send him into a tailspin. Get out of my way, extras! Screamed the blonde as his goal was clear, to finally defeat the slime teen. Bakugo's scarlet eyes aimed forward as he forced his palm to ignite over and over again, blasting him forward. Leading the pack was Todoroki though his luck was soon about to run out. The intense glare of the sunlight reflecting off the frozen structures began to impair his already affected vision. Not noticing the metallic boot of a machine, the boy tripped, sending him crashing to the ground. Damn it, not now, growled the boy, as he attempted to get to his feet, while the large claw of the zero-point robot came down on him about to catch its prey. Suddenly, a devastating impact compressed and demolished the machine, causing it to short-circuit and collapse. Upon focusing his vision, Todoroki managed to make out a floating uniform that he came to realize was Toru Hagakure coming to his rescue. You okay, Todoroki? Close call you had there, said the girl, as she dusted her hands together and gestured a thumbs up towards her classmate, though a combination of weakened sight and invisible skin meant it was all for naught. Forcing himself to his feet, Todoroki dusted off his uniform and began running towards the next section of the obstacle course. I didn't need your help. The arrogant voice of the boy brought a heavy sigh from the invisible girl, though the hairs on the back of her neck suddenly stood on end as she heard the swishing sound of slime pass by her. Looking forward, she could see a speeding slime boy close the distance between himself and the icy hot teen. Before she could follow their lead, Hagakure felt something hit her foot. Then, when glancing down, she noticed it was a sticky ball. Her eyes widened as she saw Mineta bouncing past her, winking in Hagakure's direction, causing her to retch in disgust. Noticing her predicament, she decided to trigger her ace in the hole. Using one for all, lightning rippled throughout her body, lighting up her silhouette with a fiery spark of the sun. But try as she might, the bond between her sneaker and the ground and the ball did not relent. While Hagakure continued to struggle to release herself, Mina Ashido passed by her with a joyful smile. Seeing her classmate's situation, she began to slide backwards to not stop her trajectory. Take off the shoe, recommended the antennaed girl as she spun back and continued on her merry way. Hagakure froze in place for a moment as the comment began to sink in. When Bakugo passed by her, 
the trapped teen frantically undid her shoelace and kicked off her second sneaker and once again triggered her quirk to imbue her with enhanced speed. In the second stage of the obstacle course, the students were met by a mountainous ravine with various stone structures connecting together through thin bridging. Arriving first, Todoroki stood over the ledge, his vision beginning to blur as a slight feeling of dread came over him. Knowing the other competitors were soon approaching, he focused his ice power and created a massive wave of ice that made a sort of bridge to the other side of the field. Just when he began sliding forward, he noticed several imperfections with his construct due to his impairment. The ice was deformed and uneven, nearly causing him to slip off. Due to this exertion, a thin layer of frost was already forming on his right side, his breathing already becoming quite heavy. Reaching the second sector just a minute after the bichromatic teen, Midoriya jumped onto the ice and shifted into his mochi form and began sliding down the trail. While he sped through, he noticed Todoroki in the lead and began to laugh to himself as he suddenly passed right between the legs of the boy. The surprise of being overtaken caused the teen to lose his focus and stumble, losing his balance and beginning to spin out uncontrollably. Sorry! yelled the slime boy in the distance. All the while, Todoroki managed to grab onto the ledge of one of his structures and kept himself from falling into the abyss. The teen forced himself back onto the bridge and took a moment to breathe until he saw that a purple dot began approaching along with explosions and a small crowd of students. Damn it, grunted the broody teen as he forced his legs to sprint forward before anyone could pass him once more. In the final zone of the obstacle course, Midori was met by a large sign that read, Danger! Mines! with a cartoonish pink skull in the center for decorative flair. This is gonna be a problem, murmured the teen as he began his careful trot through the minefield. Close behind was Todoroki, who immediately rushed past the nearly snail-paced greenette. Before Midoriya could warn the teen, a mine erupted from beneath their feet, sending Todoroki flying back and crashing towards the ground. The slime boy's eyes popped out in comedic fashion, shocked at the event, and began to juggle from nervousness. After the explosion, Bakugo managed to catch up to the pack leaders and stopped short of entering the minefield. His brows were furrowed as a serious expression rested on his face. For the moment, personal rivalries did not matter. All that mattered was victory. Analyzing the minefield, he began slowly stepping through the area, carefully avoiding the explosives. Mineta finally managed to bounce into the scene, but just like Bakugo, he stopped dead in his tracks before entering the danger zone. Minefield? Who decided this was a good idea? shouted Mineta as he gripped the purple spheres on his head tightly in frustration. Hearing his friend's complaints, Midoriya turned around and began waving at the great boy. The dwarven teen gulped hard and carefully began following the slime trail left behind by the emerald-eyed boy. Hearing a commotion in the distance, the four teens could see dust being lifted as the invisible girl was dashing towards them, followed by Ashido, who was sliding forward using her acid. From behind the two, the remaining students ran at full speed, attempting to complete the race. This prompted the four 1A students to rush their pace, Bakugo panicking as he pointed his left arm behind him and set off an explosion that began triggering a chain reaction that caused multiple minds to go off simultaneously. Midoriya saw his old friend's intentions and immediately reacted by stretching his body and wrapping around the approaching Mineta. Covering him sort of like a dome, his slime turned green when the explosions were set off and the elasticity of his shielding strengthened only slightly. When the initial shock passed, the slime quirk user jumped off his friend and slowly reformed his humanoid slime body. The short-statured boy's mouth was agape for a second, before shaking his head to focus on the task at hand. Since when can you- Never mind, let's go! said Mineta as he began bouncing towards the finish line behind Bakugo. The still rather stunned Midoriya steadied himself as he began dashing towards the end, as some of the teens rushed through the minefield, seeing the end of the first event approaching. The first to finish the race was Bakugo, followed by Midoriya and Mineta, who crossed simultaneously. Todoroki, managing to compose himself, finished the race shortly after Mina and Hagakure arrived and completed the event. In the end, a total of 42 students made it to the second stage of the sports festival, including the entirety of Class 1A. All right, everyone, congratulations on getting this far, but now, it's time to see how well you can work as a team, announced the X-rated hero Midnight as she posed with her whip snapping in the air loudly. The dwarven purple teen couldn't help but stare lasciviously towards the educator. Noticing this, 
Midoriya grinned and kicked the boy behind the knee lightly, causing him to lose balance and tumble. The tomfoolery by the two teens was met by intense glares and a rather loud shushing by their class representatives, which made the two focus on the announcements. The next event we call the Cavalry Battle, Midnight said, as she informed the students that they would be given headbands with scores based on their placing in the first event. There would be one unique score that was provided to the winner of the race, worth a total of 10 million points. Bakugo would be awarded this headband and had been made the main target for all the participants. You now have 15 minutes to make teams with no more than four members. Time starts now. The students began rapidly rushing through the arena, attempting to build their respective teams. The slime teen and pop-off user immediately decided to team up. The frog girl Suyu also approached them to join. Thinking carefully, the three began to huddle together to make a game plan, until the pink-haired Mina jumped in, asking to be the final member of their team. Sure, sure. The more the merrier, said Midoriya, stammering from the sudden appearance. A strange nervousness overwhelmed the freckled youth. Now with a squad of four, Team Midoriya had been fully formed and ready for the second stage. Across the field, the fiery blonde had his own team already secure. Uraraka, Kirishima, and Tokoyami, an intimidating squadron. All the while, Todoroki approached some of his available classmates and built a team consisting of Momo Yayorozu, Denki Kaminari, and Tenya Ida. His teammates did voice their concerns as the bichromatic teen insisted on being the one lifted up. Todoroki, with your... condition, is it wise for you to take up this role? Questioned Yayorozu, her hands balled up into soft fists pressed against her chest. The girl's worried expression would be mirrored by the others, who lacked confidence in the partially blind youth's abilities. His performance in the first round, in addition to the doubt of his teammates, caused frustrations and anger to boil over within the boy that came out in hateful glares that silenced the group. I'm fine. They need a handicap to even compete with us, growled Todoroki in an uncharacteristically cocky tone, though this was all a guise to hide his insecurities, as he was truly doubting himself, but refused to appear the fool, especially with his father watching. Though, still unconvinced, the teens relented and propped the icy hot teen above them. On Midoriya's team, Mineta was chosen to be the one elevated, due to him being... vertically challenged. Though he was nervous, the encouragement from his tight-knit friends group helped him ease the nerves. Tightening his headband and gulping hard, Mineta looked on as he was being held above, ready for battle. All right, kiddos, time's up! Get to your starting positions, announced Midnight as she snapped her whip in the air, which caused some of the boys in the competition and crowd to blush at the seductive instructor. Mineta especially let a small trail of drool slide off his chin and onto Midoriya's head. Sighing heavily, a tendril of slime came upwards and smacked the grape-headed boy in the back of the head, reclaiming his attention. Focus, Mineta! You can gawk later, shouted the slime teen while giving a slight glare towards the perverted youth. Rubbing the back of his head to ease the sting, Mineta stuck his tongue out in retort. A loud horn echoed throughout the field as Midnight signaled the beginning of the cavalry battle. Immediately, the teams began converging on Team Bakugo, the 10 million headband the clear target. The ashen blonde sharpened his eyes as he quickly looked around and grinned sadistically. Come get it, you extras! shouted the teen as sweat began to collect in his left palm. His teammates looked up and nodded, seeing as a strategy had already been made. Uraka took a deep breath as she triggered her quirk on the makeshift squad. As the grouping of teams approached, a large blast triggered from the pooled sweat, sending the quartet into a tailspin. From the spinning blur, the umbral claws of Dark Shadow emerged, knocking back many attackers and swiping away some of their headbands. Though the successful counterattack was short-lived, as the team suddenly dropped back to the ground with a large pool of vomit being rocketed to the ground by the gravity girl. Damn lightweight, barked Bakugo, annoyed at how quickly the quirk affected his classmate. Just then, a hand passed by snatching the headband in that moment of weakness. Though, while this occurred, the scarlet-eyed boy couldn't help but look back at Tokoyami, who seemed to be struggling to control his quirk, it being frozen in place. I'll be taking that said the 1B student, Nato Monoma. A devious smile plastered on his face. Bakugo's eyes widened 
as he could see an ebony figure jump out of Dark Shadow, joining the opposition. Nice job, Kuro Ryu, complimented the boastful teen as the figure revealed itself to be a member of Class 1B. The opposing force began to run back as they attempted to distance themselves from Team Bakugo. On the other side of the battlefield, Team Midoriya had decided to use their complementary abilities to facilitate movement. Mina began producing a slipstream of acid as Midoriya had turned his entire body to slime and began using his semi-liquid form to drag the team throughout the arena. While the combatants attempted to snatch Mineta's headband, one by one they fell into their devious trap, grabbing a handful of sticky balls in the process, which rendered their palms fully occupied. Those caught in the sticky trap ended up getting their headbands yoinked off by the long, retractable tongue of the frog quirk user, their overall score increasing by the minute. The students left in the slime squad's dust ended up slipping in the viscous liquid that now had a visible trail left behind. From a distance, Mineta noticed the teams of Bakugo and Class 1B were in direct combat for the ownership of the top-ranked headband. Though it seemed that the Ashen Blonde was struggling due to only using one hand to fight back, it seemed that the talkative boy was using multiple quirks against the anger-prone teen. Midoriya, look! It's that jerk from the cafeteria! Hearing the comment from Mineta, the slime teen glanced over to see Monoma easily handling his childhood bully. His normal emerald eyes began to flash into a bloody scarlet, and his body began dragging the team towards the conflict. Due to the slippery ground, the others could do little to avoid the situation. They attempted to talk him down, the grape-haired boy digging his heels into Midoriya's shoulders to grab his attention. As they approached, Team Bakugo realized they were fighting a losing battle, and that if they continued, they might not pass this section at all. Due to his classmates convincing the Ashen Blonde, they rushed away to collect more headbands. Monoma began cackling as he and his team's strategy was executed perfectly, though the approaching slime team brought a larger Cheshire grin to his face. Why, if it isn't the killer and his grunts? The obnoxious words from the copy teen caused Midori to breathe heavily. All the while, his slime shifted to green. Tendrils of green slime began growing from the boy's body, which caused the dwarven rider great distress. Come on, try it, villain boy. Everyone's watching. Monoma taunted while his team began getting uncomfortable at the exchange. Once again... Monoma had gone much too far. As they approached and the violent intentions of the slime youth became obvious, a voice of reason whispered in his ear, Slime boy, chill out. You're too cute to be a villain. The words from Mina caused Midoriya to stop in his tracks, his body suddenly jiggling as his eyes shifted back to green and his complexion changed to a bright red. The word cute shocked the boy to attention, the violent tendencies forcefully suppressed. Seems that worked. Now let's get their headbands! Mina smiled brightly as her black scleras locked onto Team Monoma before launching an acidic slipstream in front of them to speed the team up. Midoriya, still trying to compose himself, began stuttering as his feet turned to slime once more to help the movement. The team rapidly approached the copy teen and his teammates, suddenly drifting towards the team and surrounding them in a circle of slippery slime. Mina then launched an acid spray which was blocked by an invisible air shield, though from the side, a glob of green slime was also spat in their direction. The slime projectile was once again blocked by another air shield, which seemed to come from the rider. Though, before Team 1B could get comfortable, Midoriya's team began to close the distance. His entire body became slime, and two tendrils shot from his chest as the cyan slime arms reached towards the cocky blonde. Too easy! touted Monoma as he reached out and grabbed the tendrils, his eyes turning green momentarily. Though, once he did, he noticed the faces of his opponents all changed into that of shit-eating grins. Monoma looked down at his palms as his entire body began to dissolve, his face drooping as his body turned to cyan slime. The shift in body composition caused him to melt right through his clothing and over his teammates that immediately began freaking out at the transformation and the cold semi-liquid that covered them. The cyan tendrils coming from Midoriya pulled back, having the 10 million headband in his grasp. Jumping back, Mineta and Mina stuck their tongue out at the opposition, while Monoma began to gurgle loudly from his puddle. After just a second, the quirk replication displaced and his body reconstituted, while his face showed frustration and anger. That is cheating! 
How dare you? I knew you were a villain! Monoma began screaming loudly, catching the attention of the crowd that suddenly grew quiet. A cool breeze passed between his legs, which caused goosebumps to emerge from the boy's skin. He glanced downwards and noticed he was naked. He screeched loudly in embarrassment as the crowd began to roar with laughter, which echoed throughout the arena. My, my! It seems we have a streaker on our hands, said Midnight through the speakers, which caused the already embarrassed boy to turn red while his team surrounded him to allow the privacy for him to get his uniform back on. Elsewhere, Team Todoroki managed to remain steady, taking advantage of the wide range of the bichromatic team's ice quirk. They managed to freeze much of the opposition in place. Knowing their score was not increasing fast enough, Todoroki came to the realization they needed to go for the top prize if they were going to win. Ida, we need speed, Todoroki said, which got the attention of the speedster who grabbed hold of his teammates and began focusing on his engines. Suddenly, a blue flame began shooting from his calves, and his recipro burst roared to life, blasting them forward towards the competition. The 1A students blasted through the field, attempting to grab the headband that had recently been appropriated by the slime teen. Todoroki's hands were spread out as he grabbed headband after headband from many students, though many got slaps instead during the motion. At breakneck speeds, they reached the slime teen, but thanks in part to the short stature of Mineta and the poor eyesight of the bichromatic teen, which caused Todoroki to miss by several inches. Just then, the time had expired, and a loud horn blasted through the arena, bringing the teams to a halt. Team Todoroki skid to a stop as a light smoke lifted from the calves of the class representative. The icy hot boy gripped the acquired headbands tightly, frustration seeping through him. His goal was absolute dominance, and once again, his plan had failed. Todoroki, it's a- oh, Enough! Todoroki interrupted Yayorozu as he jumped off of his elevated position, throwing the headbands towards his teammates. The boy stomped away, grinding his teeth together as anger flowed through him, his fists so tight that his knuckles turned white. Yayorozu looked on, watching her clearly disturbed classmate leave them be. The announcements for the next round were yet to be spoken. Todoroki, mumbled the ebony-haired girl, her hands tight against her chest in concern. Midnight announced the cavalry battle had concluded through the speaker system. The points would then be tallied, and the top four teams would proceed to the next round. After a few minutes, it had been announced that the winners of the second round were the team of Midoriya, Mineta, Mina, and Suyu. The quartet celebrated loudly, until they were promptly told to control themselves as the cameras were still rolling. For the next hour or so, recreational games were performed for the entertainment of the masses, allowing the contestants time to rest their bodies for the upcoming struggle. Time had finally come for the final event of the sports festival, the fighting tournament. Midoriya and Mineta stood alongside their fellow UA classmates as they waited anxiously to know who they were up against. As Midnight gestured towards the large display showing the brackets for the tournament, the color of Mineta's face washed out and he became pale as paper. The combatants had been decided, and the first round was shocking to say the least. The brackets were as followed. Ochaka Uraraka vs. Suyu Asui, Fumikage Tokoyami vs. Momo Yayorozu, Hitoshi Shinzo vs. Tenya Ida, Eijiro Kirishima vs. Tetsu Tetsu, Denki Kaminari vs. Ibarra Shiozaki, Mina Ashido vs. Toru Hagakure, Izuku Midoriya vs. Shoto Todoroki, and the final fight of the first round, Katsuki Bakugo vs. Minoru Mineta. The teens in attendance were obviously anxious for the upcoming fights, but no one held the pressure more than Mineta, who felt as if he was about to urinate himself. Glancing over, he could see Bakugo glaring daggers at him whose red eyes struck fear into Mineta's very soul. In the marble white arena stood two class 1A students, the gravity girl, Ochaka Uaraka, and the frogged quirked, Suyu Asui. The crowd would watch in anticipation as they awaited the fight to begin. The two girls focused on one another, the arena feeling like an empty stadium for the teens. By making it this far into the sports festival, their chances of being scattered by top hero agencies had increased dramatically, but victory would assure their success. The hopes of the Uaraka family weighed heavily on the brown-haired girl's shoulders, knowing full well her family's monetary situation was dire. 
Her goal was to become a pro hero and finally lift her family up from poverty, and this event would be the catalyst for her career. Though you wouldn't know it by looking at her, Asui was nervous. She had not expected to get this far in the competition, especially since the competition was fierce and her specialty was not combat. Placing a finger on her chin, she watched forward, not wanting to make the first move. Come on, Sue, let's give it all we got! yelled Uaraka as she ran forward, her fist balled up, ready for combat. A flurry of punches and kicks were sent towards the frog girl's way, but were easily dodged as her amphibian biology granted her extreme dexterity. In one of the many attempts from Uaraka to land a hit, Asui threw herself down close to the ground. Using her balance, she spun her body and landed a devastating kick to the side of Uaraka's head, sending her reeling. Using this opportunity, Asui jumped up high and launched her tongue towards her opponent, wrapping around her waist. That had been the perfect setup for victory, as she utilized her momentum when coming down to the ground to throw the gravity girl out of bounds and eliminating her in quick fashion. Sorry, Uaraka. Hope you didn't hit your head. Ribbit. The dazed Uaraka laid on the ground as she attempted to return to her senses as the horn blared, and Midnight announced Asui's successful movement onto the second round. The two soon after exchanged sportsmanlike pleasantries, though Uraraka seemed to be taking the loss fairly hard. The frog-like girl attempted to reach out, but she considered it best to allow her classmate to deal with her emotions on her own for the moment. For the next fight, Tokuyami wound up defeating Yaoyorozu after a hard-fought battle. After the two teens made their way off the stage, the arena was cleaned up quickly for the next match. Just moments later, both Mina Ashido and Toru Hagakure came up to the stage to begin their fight. Up next, Toru Hagakure versus Mina Ashido. Come on, ladies, let's show them what UA is all about, announced Midnight, which caused the crowd to begin their cheers in anticipation for the strange pair's fight. While the invisible girl cracked her joints, the acid spraying girl was jumping up and down with a wide grin on her face. While Hagakure was taking this fight seriously, Ashido seemed to be enjoying herself, possibly surprised she had made it this far already. Don't underestimate me, Mina, shouted the invisible girl as she tightened her fists and focused on her inherited power. One for all began coursing through her veins, causing her figure to light up like a neon sign. After a horn signaled the beginning of the fight, with a quick burst of speed, the former invisible girl dashed towards her opponent. Quickly closing the distance, the girl launched a dynamic fist towards the pinkette, though she had not accounted for her opponent's ingenuity. Mere moments before Hagakure's fist could make impact, Ashido dodged with a slight shift to her weight, but the speeding fighter continued moving forward as she slipped on an acid puddle. Haha, <laughs> gotcha! Ashido used the opportunity to jump her opponent, who was on her way out of the arena. Sending a drop kick towards the speeding Hagakure, but just as she was about to be kicked out of the arena, the invisible girl punched downwards with the power of one for all, which was strong enough to propel her into the air. Within the sudden dust cloud, Mina broke through, falling on the ground from the failed kick attempt. Looking upwards, her black eyes widened in shock at the display of power. After forcing herself to ignore the event, the acid spitter forced herself to her feet and ran towards the center of the stage to avoid getting knocked out of the arena. Once Hagakure made it back to her feet, she jumped off the ground at breakneck speeds and began launching a barrage of punches towards Ashido. Narrowly avoiding the hits, the pink girl walked backwards, not noticing how close she was getting to the edge. After several minutes of dodging and intense movement, Ashido felt her heart drop when she could feel her heels floating over the edge. In a swift movement, Hagakure twisted her body and landed a spinning back kick that shot the athletic girl off the edge and onto the ground. Spinning in the air from the hit, Ashido landed on the grassy terrain, holding her ribs as she was hit by the incredible blow. Ouch! You got me! You were awesome, Hagakure! Ashido said as she slowly got to her feet and approached her classmate. The two high-fived in the middle of the ring in a show of sportsmanship and left the stage together laughing. While the rubble was being collected and the arena being prepped for the next round, Tenya Ida was stretching in the waiting area. The boy was determined, not knowing what to expect from his purple-haired opponent. 
Hey, Ida, sorry for interrupting you, but there's something you should know about that Shinzo guy, said the tailed teen Mashireu Ojiro. With a concerned look on his face, the class representative quickly straightened up and approached his classmate, questioning his reasoning for dropping out of the final round when he had clearly made it past the cavalry battle. Look, I don't remember anything that happened in the previous event. I said one word to the guy and suddenly I'm in the tournament. A look of disappointment rested on Ojiro's face as he crossed his arms and gazed at the floor. Though Ida was listening, he was still attempting to comprehend what had occurred. How terrifying was this boy's quirk? Though, that doesn't explain why you decided to drop out, Ojiro. Ojiro grit his teeth at the continued questioning from Ida. The feeling of helplessness he felt while under the mysterious teen's quirk had overwhelmed him. The bespeckled teen placed his hand on his troubled classmate's shoulder, which brought Ojiro's vision back up to Ida. In good conscience, I can't continue. Just please listen to me, Ida. Don't answer him. With a forced smile, Ojiro bowed slightly and exited the room, leaving Ida alone with his thoughts. Considering the team Shinzo had built consisted of two of his classmates, Ojiro and Hakakure, Ida believed that they had continued due to their prowess, but could there have been something more sinister in the works? The hero in training would need to make sure his victory was guaranteed, even if it meant controlling his rather eccentric tendencies. Ida made his way to the arena as the announcers began hyping up the upcoming fight. When he arrived, the speedster noticed his opponent had already arrived and was standing across from him in a lax stance, his hands in his pockets. The boy had wild purple hair with deep bags under his eyes, he was slightly reminiscent of Aizawa, which did disturb Ida in a way. Lifting his pants leg to accommodate his calf engines, Ida got into position to rocket forward if need be. All the while, the mysterious class 1C student looked on, a look of boredom plastered on his face. After a few seconds of tense silence, Midnight signaled the fight to begin, yet the two did not move. Hey Thomas the Tank Engine, lighten up. It's Hero Course versus General Studies. This should be child's play for the brother of Ingenium. Ida nearly fell over from the words coming from this boy's mouth. Not only had he been compared to an arguably creepy cartoon, but his familial bonds being revealed publicly? Just then, a group in the crowd then began chanting Thomas, which caused others to join in, goading Ida further. I cannot stand for this any law, said Ida, before suddenly going silent his eyes glossing over into a trance. Got ya, marked the purple-haired boy as he slowly walked towards the speedster, stopping just a few feet from him. Shinzo smiled wide as he gestured outwards, gesturing towards the outside of the ring. In that moment, Ida tried to move. He attempted to scream, though all his efforts were for naught. Time for you to leave the ring, Ida. Doing as commanded, Ida turned around and stepped out of the ring, seemingly voluntarily. A horn blasted, signaling the end of the round and the victory of the mind control quirk user. Right on cue, Ida found himself blinking and noticed he was outside of the ring. Wait, no, I... Darn it. Mumbled the teen as he kicked the ground and walked away, frustrated that even with a warning from his classmate, he was still defeated. At that point, Shinzo had already left the ring and gone to the waiting area, awaiting the semifinals to begin. The next fight was a battle of the hardening quirk users, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu, which would end up as a tie, though after the two rested, a tiebreaker would need to occur. Following the tie, Ibarra Shiyazaki defeated Denki Kaminari in convincing fashion to advance to the semifinals. The next battle would be one to watch, as Azuka Midoriya stepped up to the stage to face a very dangerous opponent, Shoto Todoroki. The slime teen stood in the now slightly battle-damaged arena as he tried to keep his composure while he attempted to drown out the crowd noise. All the while, Todoroki stood with both fists clenched tightly, his brow furrowed. It seemed like this fight would become the vehicle for him to unleash his frustrations. Within the crowd stood the large flame hero, Endeavor, who shouted Shoto's name into the air, showing great pride towards his progeny. Although... The voice of the man just seemed to anger the icy hot teen further. Time for the next round! Izuka Midoriya versus Shoto Todoroki! 
Ready, boys? Let's go! Announced Midnight as the horns signaled the beginning of the fight. The two teens immediately jumped into action. Midoriya shifted into his human slime form and circled his opponent, while Todoroki adjusted his light-protecting goggles and attempted to send walls of ice that barely missed the slime boy. This continued for a few minutes before Todoroki's frustration built up and overflowed completely. Enough with these games, shouted the bichromatic teen as he slammed his right arm into the ground, sending a massive wall of ice in all directions, which ensnared the slime boy. Within the ice, Midoriya began to panic, knowing that if he remained within this prison for long, he would be eliminated. The sheer cold of the ice was beginning to turn his semi-liquid form into slush. Now desperate, the slimy boy began thinking back to his weeks of training and the skills he fostered during that time. Knowing that in terms of his body composition, there were many things he should be capable of. Both he and two of his classmates were able to generate slime, but one of his classmates had a special type, acid slime. Observing his classmates would do wonders for the boy as it taught him creative ways on using his unique powers. After a few seconds of a seemingly easy victory, Todoroki began signaling to the teaching staff to end the fight as Midoriya could not continue. Though suddenly, a small amount of steam began flowing out of the ice wall. After a second, the ice cracked and Midoriya jumped out in the form of a mochi ball. Standing atop the ice, the area beneath him was slowly being consumed by acidic secretions. The boy shaped his body back into his humanoid slime form and stuck his tongue out in defiance, which caused the crowd to go into an uproar. <laughs> How is that possible? Since when can you do that? growled Todoroki as he sent another wall of ice towards the boy, now using his dexterous movements. Midoriya would continue to secrete acid around his body, melting through the waves of ice. The icy teen was overexerting his body, which caused frost to begin forming on his right side, and the amount of ice lessened each attack. Missed me, said Midoriya, as he slipped through the ice and managed to close the distance, appearing just a few feet from Todoroki. In a moment, Midoriya's body shifted from slime to human and resulted in the freckled youth landing a solid right hook to the semi-blind boy's chin, sending him spinning. Right after landing the hit, Midoriya turned back into a slime and changed into a serpentine form, reaching toward the dazed Todoroki. As he shook off the cobwebs, Todoroki forced walls of ice to surround him to defend from another attack before he could catch his breath. Wiping away a small trail of blood from his lip, the bichromatic teen stood breathing heavily as his body was trembling with ice. Around the shield of ice circled Midoriya as he jumped onto the wall and began sliding around it, leaving a trail of acid in his wake, which was slowly cutting through. Damn it, at this rate, mumbled Todoroki as he looked down at his left hand and flashes of his difficult childhood came to the surface. The physical trauma caused by his mother's crazed state due to his father's abuse. The day he vowed not to utilize his father's quirk and the clear disappointment his father had at this revelation. Midoriya continued circling the walls of ice, now closing in on his opponent, though it seemed that this battle wasn't being fought wholeheartedly. Jumping off the ice, Midoriya shifted his body structure to its humanoid form and stared at Todoroki with an annoyed look on his face. Do you really think that low of me that you won't be using your fire? Asked the emerald-eyed boy, which prompted Todoroki to lower his barriers, his face showing clear fatigue and his heavy breathing visible due to the cold. Looking upwards, the bichromatic boy could see his father in full costume shouting for him to go all out. Grinding his teeth, the bichromatic teen attempted to look away, but his attention was captured by his opponent once more. Daddy issues, I guess. Look, if you want any hope of beating me, you better go all out. I'm only warning you this one time. Getting into fighting position, Midoriya waited for his opponent to react, but he remained still. What had gone so wrong for him to forsake part of himself? This would be something Midoriya would want to explore further. I refuse. I'm not using that man's quirk, said Todoroki as he sent a thin beam of ice towards the slime boy that was easily dodged. The exertion brought the icy teen to one knee, the feeling on his right side beginning to dull. Slowly stepping closer, 
Midoriya looked, hoping this battle wouldn't end so anticlimactically. It's the quirk you were born with, Todoroki. It's not his! Now show me your stuff! You're supposed to be one of the strongest in our class, not this pathetic mess! The words of the slime teen reverberated through the icy hot teen's being. The feelings of inadequacy, the frustration with losing part of his eyesight, the failings through the sports festival all came to a crash as his left side suddenly erupted into fire. The goggles that were wrapped around Todoroki's head could not resist the heat and melted right off, exposing the teen to the rays of the sun. Ignoring the discomfort, Todoroki blasted ice and fire behind him, propelling him towards Midoriya. Smiling wide, the slime teen forced his body forward, sliding to meet his opponent in the center of the ring. Once the icy hot teen reached Midoriya, he created a wall of ice on his left side, forcing the slime teen to be in the trajectory of his left side. Quickly taking advantage, he sent a massive flamethrower towards his opponent that seemingly engulfed Midoriya whole. From the smoke clouds blasted a ball with a melting ice shield over the top of it, which made direct contact with the dual-quirked boy. The impact was so great that Todoroki was rocketed out of bounds completely, bouncing off the ground. Thanks for the ice, Todoroki. Good thing there was plenty around for me to use, or I would have been a goner. The crowd remained silent for a few seconds, not understanding what they had just seen. Midnight approached the ring and looked at both the teens, still somewhat confused as to what had happened, but the result was obvious. Well, folks, Shoto Todoroki is out of bounds, which means Izuka Midoriya wins! With the announcement, the crowd popped with intense cheers. The loud noise hit Midoriya's eardrums like a gunshot, which nearly caused him to melt into a formless puddle on the floor. Outside of the ring, Todoroki struggled to get to his feet. His vision seemed to double everything in his surroundings, causing him more discomfort while he attempted to steady himself. An unexpected hand reached out from the blur. It was Midoriya, who quickly approached to assist his classmate. The icy hot teen's first instinct would be to slap the hand away, but this battle had brought something to light for the young man. This had been a battle between a seemingly unstoppable quirk versus a power that could easily be considered a joke. But at the end of the day, the jester defeated the knight. Swallowing his pride, the bichromatic boy reached out and grabbed the hand of his classmate and got to his feet. The two teens shook hands in a show of sportsmanship, which won the approval from the crowd above, though Endeavor had now long since left to vent away his frustrations. There would then be a considerable amount of time before the final fight of the first round began. All the while, Mineta sat alone in the waiting area, sweating profusely in fear of what was to come. Imagining all the horrible things that Bakugo would have ready for him scared the dwarven boy half to death. Using a paper bag, Mineta inhaled and exhaled into it, inflating and deflating it to calm his anxiety, though it did little to soothe his mental state. From the arena doors entered Midoriya, joined by Ashido and Asui, who had decided to check up on their obviously petrified friend. The boy held back tears as his emotions were too much for him at that very second. He had to fight arguably the most powerful member of Class 1A, as well as the most violent. Hey, Mineta, you okay? Asked Midoriya, as he placed a hand on the boy's shoulder, which prompted a loud scream. The reaction was so strong that Mineta completely fell out of the chair and hit the floor. Midori attempted to catch his friend, but the movement was too quick. The three Class 1A students held in their laughter to save the anxious teen's feelings. You really need to stop falling out of chairs, Mineta. Ribbit, commented Asui as she placed her index finger on her lip. All the while, Ashido could no longer contain herself and burst into laughter. The echoing sound of the girl's laughter just added insult to injury for the perverted youth, though he had worse things to worry about. Is it too late to quit? Asked the purple-haired boy. His cheeks red while his hands shook and his teeth chattered violently. Asui and Midoriya stayed silent during the suggestion of forfeiting, while Ashido continued to laugh endlessly. The emerald-eyed boy crossed his arms and gave a playful smirk towards his friend, which made the boy drop his head in defeat. Way too late, bud. Besides, 
Do you really want to miss the chance of showing the big old kitty cat who's boss? Knowing his best friend wouldn't allow him to pull back at this point, Mineta gave a half-hearted smile and raised a thumbs up, which was met by the slime teen's own gesture. The foursome left the waiting area, knowing it would only be mere moments before the next round began. If I die, you better bury me somewhere nice. No promises, bud. The two boys teased each other until it was time for them to split. The group wished Mineta good luck as they left for the spectating area. The still nerve-stricken boy entered the ring, the crowd reactions giving him a slight confidence boost. But just then, the origin of his fear had emerged. Bakugo entered the ring, opposite Mineta, a wicked grin on his face as he began removing the brace on his right arm. The grape-haired boy's eyes widened, the veins of the whites of his eyes throbbed from the shock of the ordeal. Though he was still somewhat injured, Bakugo was forsaking safety. But to what end? Remember me? Yeah, I haven't forgotten your part in this. The atomic blonde lifted his scarred arm, cracking the joints on his hands, sparks erupting from it. Mineta squirmed and shook as fear flooded over him, the image of a tombstone covered in ash now filling his imagination. I'm not just gonna win. I'm going to destroy you. A high-pitched screech came out of the boy's mouth as the tension was at an all-time high, and rightfully so, was near wetting himself. The battle was signaled to begin, and with that, Bakugo began stepping forward. Though Mineta stood still, not out of bravery, but of fear. When the two were now within a few feet of each other, Mineta's fight-or-flight instincts kicked in, and he attempted to run the other way, only to be kicked in the stomach, sending him upwards. Winded, the boy spat out, unable to form a coherent thought before getting hammered towards the ground by the vindictive blonde. Hitting the ground flat on his face, Mineta twitched and attempted to drag himself away from his aggressor, only for his lack of endurance to stop him from doing so. Smiling wickedly, Bakugo grabbed his opponent by the back of his uniform and aimed his left hand towards his face before sparking an explosion that sent him flying. The nearly unconscious Mineta was now rocketing out of the ring, but was caught by Bakugo, who had further plans for the boy. The crowd began raining boos towards the bully, seeing as he was both the bigger and stronger of the two. It was clear who the superior fighter was. Holding Mineta by the collar, Bakugo launched Mineta towards the center of the ring, using an explosion to propel himself harder against the surface. Now seeing double, Mineta shook as he attempted to recover from the beatdown. Blood now streamed from his nose and lip, the situation was becoming dire, and if it continued, would cause grave injury. Moving in and out of consciousness, Mineta had an endless feeling of dread consume him as his opponent approached. In his lack of consciousness, the memories of the past two weeks of training surfaced. The endless hours of strategizing, combat exercises, and quirk training, but sadly, it seemed it was all for naught. He was mismatched and had nary a chance to win. Already accepting his fate, the boy curled his body and placed his hands behind his head to avoid further injury. Bakugo's foot then hit Mineta square on the jaw, breaking his guard further, splitting his lip open, and spilling his blood. Come on, hotshot! I thought you were the shit! You're a booger of a bodyguard and here to protect you now, is he? The crescendo of boos from the crowd rained down, people yelling for the fight to be ended as the opponent was unable to defend himself. Insults were hurled towards Bakugo, who seemed to revel in the hate. Bakugo turned around, his back facing the dwarven boy. He outstretched his arms and yelled at the crowd in return. Are you not entertained, you bastards? Ha! Huh? Isn't this what you want? Turning around, Bakugo blasted an explosion towards Mineta, sending him rolling through the ring until he stopped near the edge. The blonde was readying the end, but wanted to make the end something worth remembering. Cracking his knuckles, Bakugo stood beside the injured boy, ready to blast him out of the ring. Although, the heckling from the crowd distracted him, which caused him to start arguing with those individuals. While the blonde was distracted, Mineta forced his vision to steady, and at that moment, he saw an opportunity. Reaching over, the boy began loosening the laces on Bakugo's shoes, and before his opponent could react, Mineta pounced upwards, and with all his weight, shoved the atomic blonde over the edge. 
In that moment, Bakugo attempted to shift his feet and using his explosion to save himself, but there was a surprise for the teen. His shoes had been stuck on the ground due to several sticky balls cementing them in place. His feet slid out of the sneakers, and the sudden movement and one-sided explosion sent him into a tailspin, making him crash violently into the ground. The crowd stood up in unison, mouths agape due to the sudden elimination. Silence flooded the arena, and from the waiting area, Ashido, Masui, and Midoriya rushed out with their faces filled with glee. With the appearance of the teens, the crowd began to shout and cheer. Not a single boo could be heard. I can't believe what I'm about to say, but Katsuki Bakugo has been eliminated! Minoru Mineta proceeds to the second round! Announced Midnight as the crowd roared in acceptance and victory. The three 1A students joined their battered and bruised classmate, lifting him on their shoulders as they celebrated along with the crowd, giving reassuring and congratulatory words towards their friend. Please don't be so rough. Everything hurts. Cried Mineta as his friends held him high, while tears ran from the teen's eyes. On the ground, Bakugo sat unmoving, his eyes wide, veins throbbing, mouth agape. The explosive teen held his hands up, his fingers twitching uncontrollably from the shocking defeat. Slowly bringing himself to his feet, Bakugo walked away, his head hung low as his hands balled up into fists, his knuckles white as ghosts. Without a word, the hero hopeful exited the arena, his mind blank and his body numb. Having changed his clothes to that of casual wear, he left the vicinity to attempt to come to terms with the day's events and what the future truly had in store for him. Because once again, the boy destined for greatness was made the fool. Hey, what's happening, everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and have I got a brand new video for you. Welcome to part 10 of What If Deku Had a Slime Quirk. It's a big one, folks, so please sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. With that out of the way, let's get this story going, shall we? With the first round of the fighting tournament now completed and the fanfare from the unexpected victory of Minoru Mineta over, it was time to continue the events to narrow down the final victor of the sports festival. During a short intermission after Mineta's match against Bakugo, the rematch for Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu took place, with Kirishima being the victor. The next round was set, and the combatants were ready, though some were a bit worse for wear. The matchups were as followed. Ibarra Shiyazaki vs. Izuku Midoriya, Fumakage Tokuyami vs. Hitoshi Shinzo, Toru Hagakure vs. Eijiro Kirishima, and Minoru Mineta vs. Suyu Asui. Already in the ring were the green-haired representatives from classes 1A and 1B. The slime teen looked over at the religious vine-haired girl who held her hands clasped in a prayer pose. The horn signaled the fight to begin as Midoriya shifted his body to slime and began his trajectory towards Shiyazaki. Erecting a wall of vines, the girl started a vocal prayer to the annoyance of her opponent, who suddenly and without warning slid between the cracks in the vines and landed a dropkick against the girl's chest, sending her reeling back. How dare you place your disgusting hands on my body, you sinful boy, Shiyazaki said as she recovered from the blow. Her vines were pulled upwards from the ground and began to attempt to take hold of the slime teen. But thanks to his semi-liquid form and viscous nature, he quickly slipped from their grasp. Shaping his body into his mochi form, Midoriya sped towards the girl and slammed his body against her head, sending her back again. Upon bouncing off her forehead, Midoriya shifted his state to his human body and landed a dynamic kick that sent the 1B student out of bounds and ended the fight. Sorry, you were just too slow. Also, I didn't use my hands. Those were my feet. Midoriya attempted to outstretch his hand to assist his opponent. But instead of taking it, his palm was slapped by a vine, which caused him to wince in pain. As Shiyazaki walked away, the green net began rubbing his hand to relieve the pain his face seemingly flustered from the quick fight. Nice meeting you too, mumbled the teen as he left the stage to allow his fellow schoolmates to proceed to the next fight. Passing by the slime teen was Tokuyami, who seemed determined to bring respect back to 1A after the disrespect shown to their class representative. 
Tokuyami and Midoriya simply gave each other a high five and spoke not a word as they walked opposite directions. The mental manipulator Shinzo had silently made his way onto the stage. His posture lax with his hands in his pockets and a slightly cocky grin plastered on his face. Then, as midnight gave the signal and horns blasted, the raven-headed boy began approaching the general studies student. Take it easy, Birdseed. Wouldn't want to mess up like old Thomas back there. Shinzo said, though internally, he was beginning to worry as intense glare seemed to penetrate and strike fear into him from the Shadow Quirk user. A trail of sweat began rolling down the violet-haired boy's face, while the shadow specter known as Dark Shadow emerged from the boy, casting a menacing aura. Though still no words were exchanged. Silent but deadly type, huh? That's cool, Edgelord, though I didn't expect you to be afraid of talking back. It seems all of 1A is used. Before the general studies student could further his goading, Dark Shadow grabbed hold of the boy's shoulders and carried him into the air. Tokuyami looked above to see Shinzo being elevated and hanging by the claws of the shadowed creature. Just as the purple-haired boy was about to speak to the silent shadow bird, Shinzo could be seen flying through the air, landing violently towards the ground. Just as soon as it had begun, the battle had ended, and the victor was Tokuyami. Though now that he was away from any danger, the teen decided it would be best to say some final words against the hero hopeful. Don't underestimate us again, or the next defeat won't be so easily experienced. Threatened the beak boy, as Dark Shadow cast a terrifying silhouette around his wielder, providing an unsettling atmosphere. Tokoyami's cold words caused chills to travel up and down Shinzo's spine, who proceeded to wipe off the dirt from his face and leave the area, his fists balled up in frustration. After Tokoyami's victory, the stage was cleared once more for a rather interesting bout. Toru Hagakure and Eijiro Kirishima entered the scene. The scarlet-haired teen cracked his knuckles and began jumping on the balls of his feet, attempting to loosen up for the fight. Hey, Hagakure! Let's show these guys what 1A's all about! The words from Kirishima excited the crowd, and his opponent then quickly punched her palm and began triggering her ace. Swiftly, her frame illuminated with the incredible power of one for all. Her body glowed bright, as if she was emanating the radiance of the sun with her very skin. The formerly invisible girl smiled as she got into a fighting stance, which Kirishima reciprocated. No problem, Rock Boy. Just don't come crying to me if you get hurt. Hagakure teased, which brought a huge smile to the face of her classmate, who promptly activated his quirk his arms and fists becoming hard and jagged. The horn rang as the two rushed forward towards the center of the ring, arriving first with a glowing girl who wrenched back a tremendous punch, focusing around 10% of her power to deliver a devastating strike, which the red-haired teen instinctively reacted to. Instantly shifting his stance upon reaching his opponent, his arms crossed in front of him and hardened to their peak before receiving a wind-blowing fist that sent Kirishima backwards. Though thanks to his near impregnable defenses, the impact had been mitigated partially, all the while his heels had dug into the stone, threatening to destroy it from the stress. Damn, that was so manly. Let's do this thing! Kirishima instantly threw his arms to the side to relieve the stress from the attack, though a slight amount of steam did rise from the impact zone. Hardening his arms, the boy rushed forward and began a barrage of punches that were nearly completely blocked by the formerly invisible girl. Ducking and weaving through the strikes, Hagakure couldn't help but remember her many hours of combat training with the number one hero. As she was already adept at activating a quirk like one for all, All Might focused on her combat training and physical conditioning. The drills she was put through with boxing-like movements showed their fruits as she dodged the incoming stone-like fists. A wild haymaker then came towards her as things suddenly seemed to slow for Hagakure when the opening presented itself. The power of one for all flowed through cells, supercharging her muscle fibers. The girl dodged the oncoming strike and with a smirk, countered with a one for all enhanced uppercut that sent Kirishima skyward. Kirishima's jaw shut tightly, nearly cracking his teeth from the impact as his body was sent upwards and leaving him vulnerable. 
the only thing he could think to do was harden his entire body to avoid another direct hit. Believing she had the upper hand, Hagakure jumped to launch a powerful kick. Though she did not expect her opponent's hardness, which caused an intense shockwave that blew the two apart from each other. An intense twinge of pain sparked up her nervous system, causing her much distress as she landed. She immediately realized that she may have fractured her leg because she handled that attack. As she winced in pain, the invisible girl scanned the area, looking for her opponent, who was hidden in the dust that was beginning to settle. Went a little overboard at that last one. Damn it, mumbled the girl as she felt an odd feeling beginning to overtake her. Unbeknownst to Hagakure, patches of skin on her arms and back began to flicker, going from a radiant white glow to the color of flesh. Hiroshima held his side, severely bruised from the recoiled kick, though luckily, his cork managed to dampen the damage. That hurt, said the sharp-toothed teen, who then proceeded to crack his neck from side to side before letting out a mighty roar balling up his fists and began to rush towards his opponent. Hagakure, in response, noticed that the redhead was approaching quickly, and with the damage on her leg, she would be unable to dodge. She realized the only way to fight against the rock-hard Ravager was to use a particular ability she had recently mastered. Fractal Ray! shouted the invisible girl as her body's bright light began moving and focusing on her outstretched palm returning the rest of her body to invisibility, with the exception of her hand. Her palm glowed so intensely the entire stadium was lit up like a Christmas tree. In a second, a mighty blast of focused energy blasted towards Kirishima, its size completely engulfing him. As the ray dimmed and vanished, Kirishima could be seen standing, his head hanging while his fist was mere inches away from the invisible girl's palm. The crowd gasped until the red head collapsed, his hardening unable to withstand the full force of the focused blast. Then, the previously silent crowd erupted into cheers for the two 1A students, as the winner had been announced. Toru Hagakure from 1A would proceed to the semifinals. A few moments passed while Cement Toss repaired the ring, filling the blast crater from the previous battle. Though not to slow down the festivities, some cracks and other imperfections were left, allowing the next two teens to prove themselves to the crowd and the TV audience watching throughout Japan as well as the rest of the world. The most curious bout of the current round was about to begin. The underdog that pulled off a miraculous victory, Minoru Mineta versus the frog girl, Suyu Asui. As the two stepped up to the ring, the battered and bruised grape-haired boy limped towards the center to meet his classmate. Try not to hurt me too much, okay? asked the dwarven boy with a goofy smile while he rubbed the back of his head, attempting to hide the intense pain he felt throughout his body from the violent assault by Katsuki Bakugo. The frog girl smiled back and gave the boy a thumbs up as the two bumped fists and took a few steps back to create distance between the two. All right, kids, let's do this! Fight! Announced Midnight through the speakers alongside the commencement bell that signaled the beginning of the fight. Su Yu instantly squatted down and began hopping towards Mineta, who seemed to barely stay on his feet. Though, once Su Yu launched her tongue to grab hold of the purple teen, he threw himself to his side and rolled out of the way. The amphibian girl continued shooting her tongue and repeatedly missed her shots, though that would soon change. Finally, after another launch of her tongue, Su Yu pulled herself closer to Mineta. Once she was at an optimal distance, she lifted her body with her arms and launched a powerful double kick towards the boy that sent him tumbling across the ring. Oh, whoa, 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 cried out the boy while he rolled through the damaged ring until he came to a stop, his soreness ever increasing and his breathing giving him issues. The closest thing to agile moves Mineta could muster was launching his body indiscriminately to avoid getting trapped, but his actions weren't sustainable. Su Yu was beginning to get irritated at the constant back and forth and decided it was time for action. So, planting both her feet and hands flat to the ground, she hopped a full force towards the grape-haired boy. Unfortunately, once she reached his perimeter, she had fallen right into his trap. Her legs, feet, and hands were all attached to the ground by a minefield of sticky balls. Taking a deep breath, 
Mineta forced his body forward and covered his opponent from head to toe in the purple spheres. Even her mouth was shut tight by the sticky trap, leaving her completely immobile. After a minute of indecisiveness, the frog girl dropped her head and signaled that she must forfeit the round due to her immobile state. The randomness of this round's event caused the crowd to awkwardly clap as they didn't know how to feel about the anticlimactic nature of the victory. Huh. Short stuff's done it again. Minoru Mineta proceeds to the next round, announced Midnight. Mineta assisted his classmate in getting loose from her restraints, though now and then he accidentally pinched and grabbed inappropriate places. Su Yu repeatedly slapped the boy when she was released to protest his actions, which only added to the long list of injuries he had sustained on that day. With the quarterfinals completed, the number of participants had gone down to only four, though most were worse for wear. Hagakure and Mineta were being treated in the on-site infirmary to make sure they could compete. Young lady, it seems you may have fractured your right leg. If you continue to fight, it may lead to a full-on break. Are you sure you wish to continue? Asked Recovery Girl, her hands behind her back as she awaited a response from Hagakure. The invisible girl sat on a bench, her leg wrapped in bandages to treat the bruising and mild pain she was experiencing. Balling up her fists and grinding her teeth, all that could come to mind was her mentor, the one who told her it was her time to say, I am here. No way am I quitting, Recovery Girl. Just you wait. I'll mop the floor with the competition, shouted the seemingly enthused hero hopeful as she forced herself to her feet, feeling a shockwave of pain strike her as she put weight on her leg. Holding back the tears and screams, Hagakure gestured with a thumbs up, which she lit up to show the room that she was well enough to compete. Well, just watch yourself. Wouldn't want to break that thing on live television. Mineta was covered in bandages in another waiting area. The abuse from the festivities had taken its toll on his small frame, and it was taking all he had to keep himself from the competition. He laid on a long bench to pass the time, attempting to nap so he could recover some of his stamina, though his mind quickly wandered to perversiveness that, if discovered, would lead to a beating. Shortly after, the crowd was already restless for the semifinals to begin, and they wouldn't have to wait too long as Izuku Midoriya and Fumikage Tokoyami entered the ring to the roar of the crowd. These two had shown exceptional ability and creativity in their power sets, and their clash would be interesting. You ready for this, Tokoyami? Because you're about to get slimed! The cheesiness of Midoriya's joke garnered nothing but silence, as Tokoyami face-palmed in shared embarrassment. The crowd, though, was filled with a mixture of sighs and chuckles, though one voice stood out in the awkward silence, the loud cheering of a short, green-haired woman. You can do it, sweetie! Inko Midoriya shouted from the stands, drawing attention to herself immediately and catching the slime teen off guard. He didn't expect his mother to be present, as she had a particular dislike of fighting. However, this motherly presence caused the boy to get somewhat nervous and embarrassed, which led him to jiggling in place, nearly decomposing. Okay then, it's time for the first fight of the semifinals to begin! Izuka Midoriya versus Fumikage Tokoyami. Ready? Go! Midnight instructed as a starting horn blasted and energized the crowd for the fight ahead. Then, using Midoriya's distraction to his advantage, Tokoyami ordered Dark Shadow to strike, its talons sharpened for the exchange. As the umbral bird struck, it was met by a humanoid slime that received the blow, but permeated through, reconnecting as the strike swept past. Midoriya quickly liquefied, turning his body into a mochi ball, and slid towards the avian teen. Dark Shadow! shouted Tokoyami as he recalled his spectral companion. It might have been too late at the speeds Midoriya was traveling. Just when the beaked boy braced himself for a strike, nothing landed. Instead, the slime boy went between his legs and up into the air behind him. Quickly turning around, Tokoyami could only witness the slime ball spinning mid-air, shifting into a humanoid form before ultimately solidifying and landing a spinning kick to the side of his head, 
sending him to the ground and sliding across the stage. Dark Shadow quickly arrived to catch its host, avoiding further damage on the bird boy. Midoriya promptly took advantage and began sprinting towards the teen, though as soon as he reached the perimeter, he jumped into the air and quickly turned to slime. While in midair, Dark Shadow sent several slashers towards the boy, which seemed to tear him to shreds, although these pieces quickly became dozens of slimy spheres that were scattered around Dark Shadow and Tokayami. The spheres then puddled together between the avian and his shadow quirk. Then, reshaping into their humanoid slime forms, Midoriya began to spin, landing a hard slap with a slimy tendril on the face of both Tokayami and Dark Shadow. Spinning like a top, Midoriya began secreting acidic slime below him that helped in his swift movements. An unexpected side effect was that he was drilling into the stage, digging himself into the stone. Feeling the ground being lost to him, Midoriya suddenly found himself in a precarious situation doing a full split in a hole he created in the stage that led straight to the ground below. Not good! Yelped out the boy as he attempted to keep his balance in his predicament. Tokoyami's vision was blurred, adjusting to his current orientation after the barrage of strikes while he struggled to get to his feet. His shadow familiar held on to his partner, assisting him further to continue. When Tokoyami's eyesight settled, he noticed his opportunity had arrived. He forced himself upright and into a sprint with Dark Shadow by his side, attempted to knock their opponent out of bounds, though they were in for a rude awakening. When Dark Shadow attempted to shove the boy down, Midoriya quickly shifted the slime and slid through his talons and over his back towards his master. Then, using this opportunity, Midoriya's humanoid slime form suddenly went skywards as he threw his arms back with such force that they stretched several feet, and then, like a rubber band, snapped forward. Snot rocket! Shouted the juniper-haired teen as his fists made contact, blowing back Tokoyami and sending him rocketing towards the outside and slamming against the concrete wall of the stadium. The crowd went into an uproar from the action-packed bout, which showed the exceptional talent of Class 1A members. While the crowd was at its peak in energy, Midnight declared Midoriya the victor, meaning he was moving on to the final round. Midoriya quickly ran towards his classmate and outstretched his hand to help him up. After a few seconds and shaking off the cobwebs, Tokoyami smirked as he took his opponent's hand and was brought to his feet. The medical staff quickly came to the scene, loaded the boy onto a gurney, and led him off. The two exchanged thumbs up as they went their separate ways, one to get treated, and the other to await his final challenge. The injured duo then arrived at the stage, hiding their discomfort from spectators. While Hagakure attempted to hide her limping, Mineta seemed to waddle to the ring, his body still aching. You sure you can do this, little guy? You can barely stand. Speak for yourself. Mineta replied as he lifted his small fists, ready to battle. Hagakure's blushing from the teasing was hidden thanks to her invisibility, but that didn't save her from embarrassment. As she lifted her fists, the invisible girl instantly activated one for all and illuminated her frame in anticipation. As the horns blared, she dashed towards the dwarven boy, attempting to land a kick to his side, but due to his technical height disadvantage, he was able to dodge with just a slight movement, turning his handicap into a benefit. Utilizing his brief moment of safety, Mineta threw himself backwards and resembled a ball rolling down a bowling alley. Stopping on his backside, the purple youth shook his head to steady himself, only to see the glowing girl approaching once again. Audibly freaking out, Mineta began to drag his body backwards as a flurry of kicks continued to attempt to land on him, but were missed due to his frantic movements. In one of the missed kicks, Hagakure landed badly on her right leg, which shot pain throughout her whole body. Squatting to grab hold of her leg, the girl bit down and ground her teeth to move past the pain and continue to fight. Using this opportunity, Mineta took a deep breath and began running at full speed towards the girl with two purple balls in his palms, an attempt at his signature move against Hagakure. Once he was within range, 
The girl turned around only for her body to flicker, and for a split second, her cleavage could be seen, no longer invisible, which caught Manetta off guard. His eyes opened wide and his mouth agape, Manetta dropped the balls and perversely outstretched his hands, his target in sight. Then, noticing the teen's intentions, she quickly turned around and landed a devastating backhanded fist that sent the boy out of bounds and soaring into the crowd. Caught by a crowd of strangers, the now dazed Manetta had a bloody nose, a black eye, and a goofy smile on his face. The incredibly awkward end of the semifinals ended with Hagakure as the victor, leaving her and Midoriya as the final two for the fighting tournament. The invisible girl was allowed time to rest and be checked by the medics once more, as it seemed she was struggling in that short exchange. However, she refused to retire and decided to fight through the pain. As All Might's successor, this was the least she could do. A few minutes passed, and the invisible girl made her way to the ring, her limp now very evident. But she wouldn't allow that to deter her. Her goal was victory. Midoriya had already been waiting in the ring, bouncing on the balls of his feet, trying to stay limber. The two approached each other, shook hands, and exchanged intense looks. Though this was rather one-sided as Midoriya couldn't see his opponent's face. Then, as they separated, both got into position, awaiting the starting horn. The silence was deafening, and the seconds felt like hours as the teens focused on each other. Midoriya could feel his heart beating through his chest as a small drop of sweat rolled down his face. Once the drop splashed onto the ground, the horn signaled, and the two charged at one another. Then, the invisible girl triggered one for all as she used its augmented properties to force her body into a sprint towards her opponent. She jumped midair, reeled the fist back, and in a familiar fashion yelled, Texas Smash! A mighty fist directed itself towards the slime teen, but Midoriya threw his body down, slid on his knees, and avoided the strike as if he was going under a limbo pole. Then, crashing from the force of the impact, Hagakure jumped out of her self-made crater and began following up on the assault. Using her hands like guns, she began shifting the glow from her body towards her fingertips, shooting a barrage of condensed light bullets towards Midoriya. The boy shifted his body to its mochi form and began sliding through the ring in a zigzag pattern, attempting to avoid the rays of light. This is new! I didn't know you could do that with your quirk, Hagakure! Commented the slimy sphere as he continued dodging the bullets, though the consistent waves were beginning to drain the invisible girl's stamina. Finally, the girl's mind began getting foggy. Her surroundings started to spin. In her days, Hagakure began to stumble, which caught the attention of the slime teen. Midoriya, noticing the opportunity, began spinning like a tire. He spun so fast that a small smoke trail formed behind him. All the while, the invisible girl had her hand on her head, with a massive headache beginning to overtake her. Jelly Roll! shouted the mochi ball as he suddenly ripped forward at tremendous speeds and his target was locked on. Then, snapping out of her disorientation, mere moments from impact, Hagakure triggered one for all once more and placed her hands in front of her and forced a giant ray of light out of her palms, which clashed with a spinning slime. The light refracted off the slime, creating a fantastic show of blue lights which shined throughout the arena. Midoriya began to scream as he continued to push forward, even though the heat from the light ray was starting to make him boil in place. Just a little lop. At that moment, the ray of light stopped, and Hagakure fell to her knees, suddenly coughing up a pool of blood that began puddling on the floor. As she coughed violently, her body began to flicker completely, going from invisible to visible. Her shoulder-length dark hair shook as she continued to cough before her headache returned violently, which caused sparks to shoot out of her. A sudden awareness to the dangers around felt like bullets were going through her skull. The intense throbbing in her brain caused the girl's vision to flicker, just as her corporeal form did. My head! Midoriya, on the other hand, crashed into the ground and reverted back to his human form, 
as he attempted to get to his feet, severe burns now marking his body. His ears perked up due to the sound of his classmates' pain-filled screams, and he made his way towards her. Ha, ha, Hagakure? Questioned Midoriya as he slowly approached her, his eyes widening at the blood on the ground and the flickering girl's pain-stricken face. Finally, Midoriya forced himself upright, his face pale as paper. Recovery girl! Somebody, help! Midoriya cried out as the medical staff began running over to the ringside. Then, as they began approaching the girl, she straightened her back and let out a blood-chilling scream that echoed throughout the arena. Immediately after, she went silent as her eyes became dull, and she collapsed in a pool of her own blood. The echoes of the medical personnel seemed distant, as Hagakure was suddenly standing in a dark void, only for a vision of a man with a scar going across his face. She tried to speak, but as she looked down, her body was fragmented in shadows. Only an arm, a leg, and half her face were present. Number nine, it seems we have much to talk about. The white-haired man said, as seven shadows appeared behind him with glowing yellow eyes. Is, is she gonna be okay? Asked Midoriya, as he stood in the hospital waiting room while a doctor approached him. The man lowered his face mask, and had a rather somber expression on his face. She seems to be comatose. We don't know what's causing it, but we'll have to wait for her labs to come through. So you should go home, son. The girl's parents should be here at any moment. The doctor said as he placed a hand on Midoriya's shoulder and walked away. The freckled boy stood on, his face showing deep concern for his classmate's safety. Deciding to stay behind, Midoriya sat back down and was eventually joined by the rest of Class 1A that came to provide moral support for their classmates. Mina, for one, approached the greenette and without a word grabbed onto his hand, attempting to soothe his worries. Despite all this, Manetta still had three medals in his palm, one gold, one silver, and one bronze. Elsewhere, Bakugo sat in a secluded area, his head hung while he rested his elbows on his knees. His failures, his multiple humiliations coursing through his mind. Bakugo had never sunk this low to have lost to such an embarrassing opponent. Him, the top student in Class 1A. That booger and his damn grape sidekick, mumbled the ashen blonde as he attempted to wrap his mind around the situation. The quiet was interrupted by footsteps that began getting louder and louder by the second, until a shadow was cast over the boy. Katsuki Bakugo. Gotta say, big fan, I believe I may have a proposition for you. The boy lifted his head to see a man wearing a purple suit, a gold chain, and a cigarette between his lips. The man had an eerie aura about him as he spoke to the teen. And why the fuck should I care about what you have to say? Bakugo spat, gritting his teeth and shooting daggers towards the purple-suited man. Chuckling from the response, the man took a drag from his cigarette and let out the smoke from the gap between his teeth. My friends call me Jiren, and I believe they would appreciate your talents more than that school of heroes ever could. A devious smile formed on the man's face as Bakugo looked on, and seemed to listen closely to Jiren's words. Though at that very moment, a despicable plot was being concocted. A mustachioed scientist with large circular goggles worked in a laboratory at an undisclosed location. His smile was from ear to ear as a tall man in a finely tailored suit walked by his side. Dr. Kuraki, how is our latest experiment going? Asked the man in a deep and frightening voice. A mixture of elegance and power seemed to exude from his very words. The scientist looked forward into the dark lab as he pulled down a switch. Flashing lights from the sparks of the machines lit up the room. Just as expected, the perfect weapon nears. All for one. The portly man began to laugh as the large tank he seemed to be experimenting on suddenly began to glow as a golem-like creature seemed to float within. 
Suddenly, its eyes opened, shining a scarlet red, while its body seemed to be made of a non-solid material, something similar to sludge. Finally, the creature began to scream, as its gurgle seemed to be audible outside the glass, much to the delight of the faceless man who smiled wickedly at the sight. And that's our video for the day, so thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Little bit of a heads up, this is the final part that will be released on the We the Celestials main channel. To continue following this story of our slimy protagonist, please visit our partner channel, WTC Anime Outcasts. Before you leave, we there's a little bit of housekeeping I want to do. First, We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description. So please feel free to check out all the other incredible projects and content our team creates. Second, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone who was involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. That's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have an amazing day! And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome! This has been Tim. Mustache out!